do Abaca. Good morning, Groovers. How are we doing on this um, feral day here in Tassie? Grey, raining on and off, windy as hell. Um, apologies, it's early morning here in Oswego. <laughs> but at least my hair looks good. Focus on that. Just look at the hair. <laughs> I will be putting headphones on later and I can also always do that. Good morning, beautiful people. Um, let's say hello to everyone. I know Miss Kay was going to be doing some vacuuming and washing her floor. She had 30 minutes to do it. Let's see how we'd go with that. Francesca, I'm not going to block you again. <laughs> Hopefully you're happily in chat with your blue red. Yes, you are. Uh, I don't think I can block you now even if I wanted to. <laughs> or maybe I can. I'm not going to see because guaranteed it'll happen and don't ever let it go. But three Third, what is it? Three times is a charm. I've still got work to do. Bristol, g'day. Bristol also uh, busy doing domestic goddess stuff, getting the guest room ready for her bestie visit, who's visiting. Very nice, very nice. Joman, hello, Groover. Hope you've got your six-pack ready. <laughs> um, bit of chatter before we kicked off about what sort of cat Sunny is, speaking of which. The back to me is uh, she's literally just got on there <laughs> with her back to me. Mm. We had a sleep in this morning. It was really lovely. She was lying on me, rolling around, having the time of her life for a good hour and a half. But, um, yeah, I've gone live, so <laughs> current mood. <laughs> um, who else is wandering in? Uh, we, I'm going to open the panel at the end of the show. There's a few things that I do want to um, cover first, though. I've got a bit to say. I've got a bit to say. Um, hi, Scout. How are you, beautiful? Well, you've just seen your little buddy, Sunny. <laughs> Thrilled that I'm live again. Um, what was the comment I read, too, um, about the song, the remix? Well, the remix is um, a royalty-free one. So not that this channel's monetized or anything like that. It's just easier that instead of keeping, you know, like constantly getting emails about a copyright claim. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think people should get money for the original songs and so on. But Michael Jackson's library, I've played it before on my channel and they're a bit more hardcore than other musos. So, yeah, I learned that when I did my podcast. <laughs> Got to stick with the, the royalty freeze. Um, welcome, yes, to anyone else wandering in. and. Not expecting, yeah, it could become a new trend on YouTube, blocking mods. If it's going to happen anywhere, it'll happen here. <laughs> I'm not expecting a large audience because, um, you know, this isn't sexy for YouTube consumers, you know, being reasonable, <laughs> discussing facts, <laughs> you know, using logic, all of that sort of stuff, especially with this case and all the cases we've followed prior to this one. And there's probably, I would imagine, still a heap of channels that are pouring over the grub truck video, pointing the finger at Jack S. Um, and I do want to discuss that. Like I'm going to open up the panel later for us to talk about the nonsense that's being discussed on YouTube and how easy it is to just go, that's not factual, that's not verified, that's not logical. Um, no, but his estate needs a coin apparently, Jamin. Hello, Ruth. Good to see you, beautiful. 
So, yeah, and also I know that I'm preaching to the converted with you guys. I know that here in the Smooth Criminal podcast community, we are reasonable people and we like facts and we care about victims and that's basically it. That's where we focus. But another topic that we cover a lot here is how social media is impacting criminal and civil trials. And once again, people's lives are now going to be destroyed. I have no doubt about it because of all the speculation and theories, not relying on the facts. And when we talk about Jack S um, shortly, I will also be using another expert to point out why this speculation is so bad, so bad. And I know that we all know it. I just like to think one day someone's going to stumble across a live of mine and watch the replay and go, okay, that's how true crimers of the OG true crime world did true crime. Interesting. I might hang out with them next time. Facts are for non-believers. We need to get a T-shirt that says that. (laughs) Um, Because, I mean, I'll just give you an example before I kick off. We're going to listen to an FBI profiler. Um, It was just, it's not a really long video, but it's just really interesting information that so many of the people on YouTube that, you know, that want answers yesterday and it's taking so long and the cops are inept and all of that sort of stuff. Let's go straight to someone who knows what they're talking about, a former FBI profiler, Um, because when you listen to it, you're like, can't really argue in the face of such fine logic, sir. What a shame there are so many people on the planet that just don't want to look at facts. They're not true crime. I've actually started to take any references to true crime off this channel um, bit by bit. I've got some hashtags and stuff that are automatically in descriptions and I need to rewrite them and either put real crime or just crime because the people that are calling themselves true crimers now are so far from it, it's not funny. I want to give you an example, though, before I kick off with... uh, experts. Um, I know for a fact that overnight in Moscow, Idaho, a dude has been arrested, not in relation to the Idaho four murders, for some domestic violence um, charges. Pretty unsavoury dude, checked out his public record. He's actually been in jail in the past for murder. Um, He his wife was participating online and saying she knows for a fact it's not him, but she's very suspicious about a neighbour. Um, but there's a lot of information about this guy already floating around. And to be honest, I'm surprised there aren't 300 channels live about him at the moment. And I looked at him because, I mean, I want to know what's going on and it's probably the most um, interesting thing that's happened, you know, in the last week or so where they've arrested this guy and you kind of go, well, if you wanted to do like a textbook profile of a potential culprit, he's ticking a shitload of boxes, a shitload of boxes. But I'm still not going to go live about him and name him or anything like that because at the moment he's been arrested um, for unrelated charges. But, yeah, out of all the people that these YouTube channels are speculating about, this guy is like way more convincing as a potential suspect than the other kids, college kids, that they continue to go on and on and on about day in, day out. And like we always say on this channel, down the track, if the facts come out and one of these kids is responsible, well, then we'll talk about it. But I'm not going to accuse other people of being um, a suspect until there's facts and information. And, you know, an arrest is usually where I'll start talking about the suspect, the perpetrator. Um, Hi, human animal. Hey, Casper. Day off and resting, nice. See, I've got a day off too. Got to say, I do love my days off. Um, yeah, I listened to Scott interestingly the other day, Human Animal, because I was thinking, I'm floating around in a sea of bullshit again. Let's go to someone like Scott Rush. And yeah, I was really disappointed in what he had to say. Very disappointed, um, especially as a criminal lawyer. Like, it was very weird. Very weird. Um, Didn't rate his summary at all. So interesting you watched him as well. Haven't watched him for a long time, to be honest. Used to listen to him back in the Chris Watts days. But, um, yeah, I did think I'd go there for a voice of reason and I didn't find it there, but I have found a couple of voices of reason who we are going to look at shortly. Um, But, yeah, so like I was saying, there's a guy that's been arrested overnight. He lives very close to the house. Um, He was apparently at the food truck as well, weirdly. Um, I think food trucks are 
for most in most places they are kind of a place where people gather when all the bars and everything close like um we will be talking about jackass later but the people that keep commenting this is another thing that's griping me that the fact you didn't buy food was suspicious like Either these people haven't been in a college community or they don't live in a community where there's a food truck where everyone goes when pubs close. Not everyone eats at them. Like, we've got one down the road, a pizza truck. It's the last thing to shut down here on the weekends and it's near a park and there's always people sitting around in the park catching up. Some people might get a pizza but not everyone does. It's not suspicious to me. But apparently it is to everyone on YouTube. He didn't get any food. There's probably 20 other people in that video footage that didn't get any food. I'm wondering, though, if the grub truck people are going back through their um, Twitch stream now to see if they can find this dude who got arrested overnight in their footage. Or the cops might be. Um, so in Auckland, in your youth, the city downtown food truck, the white lady, cute. <laughs> so at the end of this live, we're going to do open up the panel and let's just have a chat about some of the stuff we're hearing on YouTube, the things that are really starting to annoy us. And also before I kick off with a expert, I just want to also say regarding Jack S, hoodie guy at the food truck. Um, do I just talk about, no, I'll talk about the allegations about him, why people are connecting all the dots and think he's the, the, the perpetrator. Um, when we look at the other expert who debunks all of that very beautifully, I might add. Um, but what I wanted to say was the video I'm about to show you is a former FBI profiler who's literally talking about the the course of justice. It's a slow process. It's a massive, massive case they're looking into. They've, I mean, we all know they haven't had a murder there for, what, six or seven years. It's not something that they do all the time. But They've got the FBI and other incredibly experienced professionals there helping them out. And, the, yeah, it, it's a slow process because you want to make sure all the evidence correlates before you lay charges. The other thing, too, is they're only just now starting to get results back in, like some forensic results. And I'm pretty sure um, this guy, Greg McCary, talks about that in this little video, too. I listened to it yesterday and I was like, why aren't all these channels that are following this case showing this segment on News Nation? Why aren't they showing this? Why are they still doing eight hour lives about Jack S? You do the math, guys. They don't want to play the voice of reason. They don't want to say, hey, guys, look, I know in chat all the time people are saying it's going cold. It's not fucking going cold. It's been, what, four weeks next, well, in four days? Like, it's. It's not going cold. They've named how many people are working on it at the moment. Like cold is every lead has run dry. There's no evidence connecting anyone to the offence. And then it just sits there. And then some cases, as the years go on, technology improves and bang, you've got somebody. But it's not going to go cold in less than a month from when it happened. That's insanity. No, Humanimal, look, you are more than welcome to, but I want to I want to show shortly um, another uh, detective's responses to the accus accusations being made about him, and I know we're talking about the same person. Um, but the other thing is that I want to say is why aren't all of these huge channels, some of them are really good true crime channels, but why aren't they showing something like I'm about to show, which would answer so many of the questions they're copying in their chats and in their comments and hopefully somebody who keeps asking these same questions over and over and over again might listen and go, okay, there's the answer I've been seeking and then shut the fuck up about it. But they're not. They'd rather keep going over and over and over with the food truck stuff. I've seen six or seven different channels all talking about whether or not Maddie or who Maddie is actually saying fuck you to in that video. Everyone's got a different way of interpreting stuff. But they're sitting there for days and days and days on end going over and over and over with that, but they're not showing something that's short, concise, and coming from someone who knows what they're talking about. And it bugs me because they are in it for clicks and cash, even the really good channels, the channels I thought were quite reasonable and, and had pretty good reputations. They're just milking this stuff over and over again. Um, but the other thing that I, hey, shady man, how to see you. Thank you. I was loving my hair too. Um, yeah, I thought she said it to Joe too, interestingly, Hume Animal, but plenty of other channels are saying it was directed at Jack. 
Um, and yes, I understand the proximity of where he lives. It's a college town that, that I mean, as much as I can't say Bullhorn Betty, uh, but the people that have physically been to that area, they talk about how small and dense it is. Like everyone's living on top of each other. And somebody mentioned the number of students that just live in that area with all the frat and sorority houses and the campus, campus accommodation, private rentals and everything. Like it's very condensed. And it's a town of 20,000 people. Like most people live pretty close to each other in Moscow, Idaho. Um, thank you, Francesca. <laughs> um, but the other thing with... Uh, Jack S too, before we kick off with this, um, with everyone still going over and over and over the food truck, they're also entertaining the concept that he then drove five hours to Boise, Idaho, or he's possibly gone to Africa, he's fled. Um, guys, seriously, if you're going to hone in on this dude and put so much time and effort into what happens at the food truck, why aren't you using logic? The cops have spoken to him. He would have given them permission to have a look at his phone. If he was driving for five hours to Boise, do you think his phone didn't ping the whole way? They don't have GPS data. If he left the country, don't you think they'd know with passports? Like this is what's irritating me is people honing in on one thing and looking at it over and over and everyone's in the chat going, it's him, it's suspicious, it's dodgy. But then you go, okay, well, you're also saying he spent five hours driving to Boise. Don't you reckon the cops have got a way of verifying that? Like you can't claim to be true crime and not use your logic with what the police, what the information is that they've got. There's a saying that's been floating around on YouTube for years with the true crime community and also prior to YouTube, social media, um, web sleuths and even in books, cops usually only give the public 10 to 15% max, between 5 and 15% of the information when they're investigating a case. And we've got all these channels honing in on that 5 to 10 or 15% amount of information and blaming all these people and making all these conclusions, that other 80, 85, 90% of information is the vital stuff, the serious stuff. We're not privy to that. So why are we spending days, weeks, months pouring over the tiny little bit of information we have got and making a big deal out of it when the cops are actually focusing on the stuff that matters that we don't know about? Again, logical, right? Pretty logical as far as I'm concerned. Hi to anyone else who's uh, wandering in. But, yeah, you can't spend eight days and days and days scrutinising a Twitch live stream from a food truck and analysing every millisecond of it but completely ignore what information he would have had to have allowed the police to access when they questioned him, when they interviewed him. You just you can't not look at the full picture <laughs> is my point. Yeah, well, that's just it. And but the fact is, even if he is out of the country, the cops know. <laughs> they know where he is. I mean, there's a reason that they not cleared. The reason that they made that statement about him and several others saying no, no, not connected. They they've probably got GPS data that shows he was driving to Boise between two and seven a.m. Couldn't have done it. So he's no, he's not. But all this other stuff that they that the YouTubers are building all this other information and how close he lived and look at him at the food truck and look at his behaviour and he didn't buy anything and all that shit. Why do you think the police were very quick to say he and several others were not considered suspects or whatever the terminology? They didn't clear. They just said they're not. They don't think they're connected or something like that. Um, but anyway, we'll talk about that at the end because I want to show first up this video, which, like I said, I know I'm preaching to the converter with you guys, but um, Greg McCrary from Donaldson's Dairy, <laughs> I keep wanting to say that, which is not fair. Um, this is a little video I stumbled across yesterday from News Nation and let me just get through the ad before I share it with you guys. Okay, and it's actually Banfield. Um, I've got through the ad. Let me go back to StreamYard and share it because I want to do this first. This is um, just explaining the very nature of how an investigation works, timeframes, 
um, whether DNA evidence is available yet, all that sort of interesting stuff that's really um, important. Sorry, my stream out at the moment is frozen. Just going to sit here. It was playing up, um, well, I thought it was playing up yesterday, but it was not. It was um, me. Yeah, I don't have an opinion on her. I'm, I want everyone to focus in on this former FBI profiler. Oh, shoot. All right, I think I'm back. Um, it's really interesting. Uh, well, it's a horrible story, Ruth, but um, my computer's really struggling. It's not letting me expand. Hang on, guys. Um, I won't be able to read chat once I've expanded this, but I am going to be providing some commentary, of course, because I don't want to get a strike for that's better. Okay. Um, but, yeah, look, irrespective of people's opinions of Ashley Banfield, I really want you to listen to Greg McCrary, who's a former FBI profiler who just provides a lot of um, information that explains a lot of things that people are questioning in a lot of the large channels' chats and in their comments. And I'm curious as to why channels aren't showing this because at least it provides answers for some of their questions and they might shut up. But no, they're too busy playing the Twitch footage of the food truck over and over. Okay. So here we go. Oh, God, I'm not talking about him on my channel, but that's a shocker, the animal. Rick Zamba? G'day, Groover. Look at you and your groovy shades, Rick. Zamba? Groovy name too. Uh, but, no, it's not the bald guy. I'm going to play this video. I need to get on with this live. Here we go. Detail this mystery of what happened behind where Brian was standing, that home at 1122 King Road. Each detail we learn, the mystery becomes less cloudy, right? But how do the new details change the profile of the killer? Now that we hear that Kaylee's injuries were significantly more brutal than Maddie's, what does it mean that both girls died in Maddie's room but not Kaylee's? That is the business of Greg McCrary. He is a former FBI special agent whose job it was to construct behavioral profiles of unknown offenders. In fact, he wrote the book on it called The Unknown Darkness, Profiling the Predators Among Us. Greg um, this guy is a bit bold, but it's a different guy that human animals talking about. <laughs> Greg, thanks so much for being here. You're a perfect voice in this you know, growing mystery. These new details are significant, and I wonder how a mind like yours would process them. The fact that one of these girls had... Oh, look, I agree too with the titles and stuff, but I'm not a fan of... Um mainstream media in any country because of all this stuff. But like I said, let's just focus on Greg. Her questions to him are relevant and the answers he provides are as well. I'm going back over to the other screen. I'll jump back and check in on you guys shortly. Far worse injuries than the other and yet was sleeping in a room that wasn't hers in the middle of the night when these murders happened. What do you make of that? Excuse me. We have to be careful that we don't uh, overinterpret uh, the information. And one hypothesis is that she was targeted. Perhaps that may explain the you know the uh, uh, number of wounds that are excessive in her. But I've had other cases where I've worked with multiple murders, <clears throat> where one victim has been subjected to the most violence, and turns out that wasn't a targeted victim. It was uh the person who had put up the most resistance uh and enraged the uh, killer so they they inflicted the killer inflicted more wounds on that person even though that person wasn't specifically targeted so we could be dealing with with anything like that so it's important not to get tunnel vision on a given hypothesis important to have multiple competing hypotheses and then let the evidence uh, sort that out and
and support one and, and, and maybe dismiss the other. So, so you have to be a little, a little bit careful with that. <clears throat> And, you know, so often we've heard, you know, from the police, from the coroner, uh, multiple reports that the kids were killed while they were sleeping. But then we hear about defensive wounds as well. And then there is this unusual aspect of two additional kids being killed or maybe three additional kids being killed if one or two were the targets. I I'd love to get your thoughts on all of that, that, that piece that means like what kind of person would take a knife not a gun that's impersonal, a personal knife, a difficult physical endeavor in the middle of the night and take out four people as opposed to the one or the person who put up the fight. Uh, no, it was me. I was on mute. Oh, my God. <laughs> what did I say before? Oh, what I was saying before was that his response about um, it's really important that you don't hone in on one hypothesis. Like the investigators right now have got so many different hypotheses and then as the facts and evidence come in, bit by bit they chip away and some of those hypotheses dissipate. And that previous comment he made was all about how you shouldn't do like what YouTubers are doing, which is hone in on Jack S and dig into his life and put videos up alleging he's the murderer and potentially, if he's innocent, ruining his life, just like we've seen happen with other cases recently, Kylie Rodney comes to mind and what happened there with um, with her on and again, off again um, boyfriend. And, 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 I mean, that's not how the cops are doing it. They don't narrow in on one thing and then try to find evidence to back that up. They are looking at so many different possible scenarios and... Um, and then they gradually, as the evidence and the DNA, the forensics, all that sort of stuff starts to come in and people they've spoken to, people who've got solid alibis are eliminated, and then gradually they build the case and the evidence and hopefully they have enough to charge someone or many people, whatever it is, with the case, with whatever crime they're, accused, they're going to be um, charged with. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so, yeah, that was the response to that. But with this second question that Ashley just asked about the they were killed in their sleep, but some of them, but then we're told some of them have defense wounds. This is the last time I want to say this. That's a question that, and when I open up the panel later, I'm sure this will come up again because it's popping up everywhere all the time. How can people have defense wounds if they were killed in their sleep? Because, you idiots, and this is going to be graphic, so I'm going to give everyone a little trigger warning. If you're in bed asleep and drunk or sober and someone sticks a knife in your throat, or slashes your throat with that knife, you're going to wake up and you're going to want to pull whatever it is in your neck out of the, your neck and you will cut your hands and that's how you get defence wounds. If one of the kids was awake and came out to see what was going on and that's how they ended up being killed, which is another theory that's been thrown around, well, yeah, defence wounds are definitely going to happen when you try to pull a knife out of your, that's been stabbed into your body or wherever you're being stabbed. So this, this constant... They said they were killed in their sleep. How can they have defence wounds? It's logical why they do. You're sound asleep and suddenly you've got a knife stuck in your throat. You're going to wake up very quickly and want and be in shock. But the first thing you're going to do, your hands are going to go to whatever that object is and try it, pull, and pull it out of your body or stop it coming into your body again. That's how you get defence wounds. And so her question was stupid and it was also a really long question with many questions within it. But let, um, let's let Greg answer. Yeah, a lot of personal, a lot of rage, obviously, with this. And it's up close and personal. Um, a knife uh, stabbing, obviously, you have to get very close to the victim. Um, and it's, it's just a different mindset uh, with that kind of a murder than it is. A, a firearm allows you distance from the victim. You don't have to interact with them necessarily up close. So it's an entirely different uh, quality to the uh, uh, to that type of uh, homicide uh, altogether. Now, from the investigative point of view, uh, uh, and again, uh, obviously, just let me say that I haven't seen the crime scene. I don't know. I'm not involved in a case, so I don't really have any inside information. But what you have to keep in mind, especially if there are defensive wounds or a lot of stabbing wounds, which there appear to be here, 
From an investigator point of view, that's very important because you have the likelihood of the offender's blood being at the scene. In other words, when someone commits a stabbing injury like this or a stabbing murder with multiple uh, stab wounds, there's a high probability they've cut themselves. The knife is in the strong hand, the weak hand is trying to control the victim, there's movement, and then the uh, uh, wound comes to the offender. He cuts himself in the either in the weak hand or with a lot of blood, it's very viscous, can slide down a knife blade and he can cut his strong hand. But regardless of the mechanics of it, um, they have to process that scene very, very carefully because there's likely to be offender blood at the scene, which obviously the DNA will be a link. Now, another uh, lead that would spiral off of that would be to go to the emergency room of the hospital or primary care uh, facilities, whatever it might be in the area, uh, and ask if anyone, say, in the days after this had come in looking to get lacerations uh, sutured up that maybe were on their hands or their arms. Um, that would be something that, uh, you know, uh, investigators should pursue and, and uh, you know, take a look at. So th those are so great. just some thoughts. Just want to say, too, this dude that got arrested overnight in Moscow has got a bandage on his wrist. So you can imagine people are having an absolute um, field day with that. People have already got him hung, drawn and quartered. Like I said earlier, for those of you just walking in, there was a guy arrested in Moscow overnight. Um, he certainly has got, um, a, you know, textbook checklist of things you would expect an offender of a crime like this to match, including previously being jailed for murder. Um, but I'm not going to name him or show his details. I've got information on him. If down the track he ends up being charged, we'll definitely be looking at him if and when that happens. But, um, yeah, the interwebs are a flurry about this guy at the moment and like everyone else, they're a flurry about until there's facts pointing at them being the perpetrator. I won't be naming them on my channel. But I did just that that comment about how offenders' blood is often mixed with victims because they also get cut uh, during the stabbings. Um, that sort of information, that DNA information is going to be incredibly critical. But, yeah, it just reminded me to say that this guy has a bandaged wrist. In the photo, however, he has been arrested on domestic violence charges and it does look like a professional bandage. It doesn't look like someone who's, you know, covering up a cut, trying to cover it up themselves. Like it looks like a medical issued proper bandage, not a, you know, not one we would have in our medicine kits at home. But, yeah, they're um, they're certainly having a field day with this guy who's been arrested overnight. And understandable that, you know, People are going to start talking, but again, on this channel, until there's something directly connecting that person to the crime, we won't be discussing him. But he's a piece of shit, I'll tell you that right now, um, and lives very close to the house, like everybody else in that area. The other thing I wanted to mention before, which I think I talked about when I was muted, was that the comment at the start <clears throat> by um, Greg the distinction about how everyone's saying that Kaylee was the one who was targeted because she had more brutal injuries, I thought it was really interesting that he mentioned he'd had cases that were where there was a targeted person, but the person with the more severe injuries was the one who fought back harder. So, you know, there's a lot of conclusions being drawn about Kaylee being the target, which may not necessarily be the case. Okay, let's keep going. We're halfway through it. Zana's mom, Kara Northington, uh, obviously apoplectic over what's happened and understandably so, but she did tell me exclusively on Friday night that she believes the person who did this knew the kids and that they knew the person and that it was someone they knew and trusted. I know it's difficult for a mom to process a lot of this, but does any of that resonate for you in terms of the rage that it would take to do this to four kids while they were sleeping? And before he answers that, um, I think, you know, the parents speaking to the media is problematic because they've also said that the police haven't told them a lot. And I think if people are going to um, comment on the statements that they make and the things they're saying and doing, 
they've got to factor that in as well, that they don't have the full picture either. It doesn't make it gospel that a victim's parent has said something publicly and it's irresponsible of her to pitch the question in that kind of way. But I also want to point out that while um, that could definitely be a theory that the cops will certainly would be one of the many theories the cops are looking at that it was someone who knew them um, and that it had to be personal for, be, to, for it to be so violent, tell um, Ted Bundy that. He didn't know his victims and he was incredibly violent um, and frenzied in the way he murdered many people. And there's gazillions of other cases where the murderers have absolutely no connection whatsoever. There's talk about this dude who was arrested um, also being in trouble for being a peeping Tom and apparently his wife um, who was, was commenting said that was the one who verified that, but I couldn't find anything about that. But not saying this dude that got arrested last night's a peeping Tom, but peeping Toms exist. Random people go looking. Ted Bundy is a classic example of that. So, again, it's interesting to look at all the stuff that's been said at the moment, but until there's actual facts, evidence and so on, it's really pointless to continue to hypothesise and put so much weight on things like, a statement by a parent who I don't know whether she's said it publicly or not, but other parents of the victims have said how the police haven't been in regular contact with them and they're not telling them stuff. So which one is it? Are you going to take what the parents are saying as being gospel and they have all the facts or are you going to acknowledge they've admitted and said they haven't got all the facts? And this is where YouTubers are so irresponsible because they cherry pick what they want to latch on to. But if you sit back and take a look at the full picture, you're like, why are you leaving all of these critical bits of information out? You can't have one without the other. Yeah, peeping toms do escalate. Um, and, yeah, the Claremont serial killer. Oh, God, wasn't he a creep? Ugh. Um, yeah, horrible. But, yeah, it's naive to say that it because it was such a violent attack that... It had to be someone who knew them because <laughs> we could sit here and list all the killers, Claremont's been named, um, Ted Bundy, let's keep going, who, I mean, look at the what the Manson, the Manson murders, how violent, how horrific and violent they were. So let's continue. See what he's, see what Greg has to say. Yes, uh, I mean it would take a lot of rage, a lot of anger. This is this is um, you know very very violent and multiple uh, victims like this. So it, it could be someone that they knew. It could be someone that knew them, but they didn't know all that well. Uh, there's this phenomena of uh, erotomania where someone gets a fixation on a victim, and the victim doesn't really know that that this fixation is in place. And then the uh, the erotomatic killer gets upset because they feel the victim is cheating on them because they go out with somebody else or, or you know whatever and it's a delusional thing and they go in and 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 commit the murder. But again, we're struck with the unusual nature of this with multiple uh, multiple victims. But again, the crime scene is dynamic. Um, a lot of a lot of it depends on victim offender interaction and, and what happened, which. I can't really talk to it because I, you know, have, I'm not familiar with the scene itself. So, see, I mean, we were talking about peeping toms as then. Like, we could go down. Let's go down the peep, peeping tom. Um, there wasn't a red car involved, bless you, shady man. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I can't even imagine what that would have been like, him animal. It's weird. But let's just let's just like here's one of the hypotheses that's probably on the police wall. Um, the peeping tom scenario. So this house, we know they didn't have blinds or curtains. Very easy to, you know, look in through the window. Peeping Tom's on the rounds, peeping in wherever he can. Stumbles across this house. There's woods behind it. Very easy to peep, undetected. And there's four kids eating food and drinks that they've picked up from the food truck on the way home. They're all in the kitchen. And he's fascinated and he's watching them. And these are gorgeous young kids. And he's got this frenzied desire to, to kill someone. 
he just keeps watching and eventually lights start going off and people start going to bed, waits a bit longer, and then he goes and he has every intention of killing as many people as possible. Probably unaware of the two other housemates on the floor below. They were probably already asleep with lights out at that time because I think there was talk that they were home and in bed and asleep you know, by one-ish. There you go. There's the hypotheses. And then that's up on the wall too. So as evidence and facts and bits and pieces start coming in, that one might stay up on the wall as well, right next to the hypothesis that it's someone who knew them. But again, these YouTubers, these big YouTube channels just latch onto the one that they see people want and they f they fuel those people so they keep coming back because they want more and more and more. I mean, we can keep talking about Kylie Rodney and the hashtag team foul play community that are revolting, if you ask me. Like anyone that would ever wish foul play on anyone um, is disgusting to me. This obviously there's clearly foul play. But um, they keep feeding what their subscribers want and they see their channels growing because there are more people that have got this narrow-minded tunnel vision that gets stuck on something and won't budge on it and they, they're they hanging out to see the creator go, see, look, look in the video. She's definitely pointing at him and saying, fuck you or fuck off or whatever it was. And they're like, yeah, yeah, it's him. And look at some of the channels who did go down the foul play road with Kylie Rodney and built their audiences up for this horrible climax and then when the creator admitted that she was starting to think it was an accident her crowd turned on her because she built them up they were all expecting a murder and she dared to say I'm now starting to think it was an accident and her channel turned on her and part of me feels like well there's your karma for doing that if you hadn't if you'd have been a responsible channel and you kept all avenues open, if you'd told your subscribers, I'm leaning towards this at the moment because of this bit of information, or now I'm starting to go this way, what about this one? You're not going to have a whole crowd turn on you when you've just got them all believing your tunnel vision, team foul play, it's that and nothing else stance, which that creator took. So, yeah, it pays to be a bit more open-minded and logical and wait for the facts. Can't help thinking how social media exposure creates. Oh, more victims. Well, more victims for predators too, yeah, along with ruining lives, naming and shaming and blaming innocent people. Except, Tori, the layout is bizarre. He had to take Ethan out first before going up, otherwise he risked not being able to escape. Well, see, but <laughs> I reckon he could have also gone up to the top floor first. Did what he did up there. Ethan wakes up, comes out of his out of um, Zanna's room, and meets the killer coming down the stairs. Like, see how quickly you can go. Could have worked in the other order, and we don't know the order in which people died. And if 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 this was say we will go back to the peeping Tom scenario again, he might have really been eyeing off Kaylee and. Um, uh, Maddie, they may have been the ones he was going to go after. He may not have intended to go after the whole household. Santa had like a locked door, like a keypad thing on her door. So Ethan clearly came out at some point. Someone, or she might have, someone had to open that door. But what's to say he didn't start at the top? You know, that's the thing. Like there's always, I don't mind being devil's avocado. I'm not being argumentative, but... There's always a, yeah, but what if he started at the top and came back down and that's when Ethan or Zanna came out of the room? You know what I mean? No, I mean. <laughs> there are some that are so evil they use such manipulative tones. What they do is start off saying, seeming like a researcher and a level head. They, yeah, into the conspiracy they go. Um, he would have had to come right out of his room, through the lounge, into the kitchen to meet the killer coming down the stairs. Yeah, and he might have. I mean, he might have been getting a glass of water and the two sort of met 
that way and then he realised something was amiss and tried to get back to the bedroom and the killer got to him first. I mean, this, this is the thing. We can keep, there's so many what ifs, which is why I like to stick to the facts because, I mean, I'm not, look, it's human to hypothesise and theorise. I get it. And I talk to friends of mine about cases that they're following as well and we do this. I just don't do it on my channel. On my channel, it's about the facts and logic and listening to experts and looking at evidence. That's it. I'm not buying into this what if thing. And there's a shitload of channels that do it. And I get it. It's human nature to want to. But the lawyer in me, I can't. I can't. Like, and even if we're having a dinner party and the case comes up in my group of friends and we're chatting about it, I'll still play devil's avocado. I'll still pitch alternates. I won't just sit there and go, yeah, yeah. So and so did it ever, ever, never, ever. My job is to find ways to clear my client's name, and you have to look at what the other side's going to bring to the table if you're going to be able to provide a good defense. And you've got to look at all the possible scenarios. Maybe it's just the way I'm wired to think, but I'd never do it on YouTube. This channel will never be one of those channels. I'm happy to call out the things people are saying and discuss that and why. If they're going to say one thing, then they've got to say the other part as well, like the examples I've already given. You can't hone in on Jack S and say he looks dodgy and he did it, but then ignore the fact that if he did drive to Boise, Idaho for five hours, there'd be GPS information that he would have given to the cops. He would have given them access to his phone. And he may not have. He may not have. But there's also mobile phone pinging and everything else that goes on. So it's just... If you're going to go down one of these roads, you've got to look at all of it. You can't just cherry pick the bits that fit your narrative. Basic debating skills. Yay. <laughs> A classic trick to deceive people into something by saying something reasonable, then sugar it with nonsense they want to sell. And boy, do they want to sell. Um. Yeah, we can go around in circles. And look, um, it's a fun thing to do. It's a human thing to do. But like I said, in the private, like if you guys were all sitting here right now around my dining room table and we're having brunch and talking about, let's go for it. Bring it on. I, like I said, I'll still play Devil's Avocado. I just would never do it on YouTube because I can see how social media is really starting to interfere with criminal trials and civil. That's why I did my little video. Thank you, Shady Man. I'm glad that you um, loved it. It was sad making it, though. I did cry a lot. But no, I didn't take it that way here, Animal. <laughs> but it is basic debating skills, which is why these channels with some really smart, there's some really smart creators out there, really smart but they still aren't looking at the big picture. They're cherry picking and it's like, stop doing that. Cement shoes. G'day. All right, let's leave, Let's give uh, Greg, who I think has been really interesting. I hope you've enjoyed, well, not enjoyed, but I hope um, just listening to an expert trying to explain to people why they need to calm the fuck down for a moment. Um, anyway, we'll let him finish. Listen, that the FBI has provided support in this crime. There are upwards of 50 people from the FBI helping. There are several behavioralists helping as well. But the Moscow police remain the lead agency on this case three weeks and a day later. This is a tiny little town. They haven't had a murder here for seven years. And I'm curious, since you've been in the trenches with the FBI and you have landed on scenes like this before, not obviously exactly, but small towns with agencies that don't, you know, do a lot more than parking tickets and some drunk tickets. When yeah. does it or does it, should it ever um, be turned over to another agency to take the helm, to turn to the states or turn to the FBI experts to take over the investigation? Uh, well, obviously you have legal jurisdictional issues and, and I will give certainly Moscow police credit for bringing in state police, bringing in the FBI. Uh, sometimes there's the um, uh, there, people are too guarded jurisdictionally. Some agencies say, I don't need any help. I can handle this myself. So I certainly give them credit for bringing in the outside agencies. And hopefully they're listening and following uh, the directions 
uh, that they're getting from the state police and from the FBI as to how to, you know, how to proceed in, in um, taking advantage of the expertise and the resources uh, that the local PD simply uh, doesn't have. But just quickly, 10 seconds left. So listen to that. So again, <laughs> YouTubers, are you listening? He's hoping that the Moscow police are paying attention to what the FBI are saying while they work on this investigation because they are the ones with the expertise and they're able to provide really good guidance and support to this um, police department who was smart enough to realise this was, you know, I mean, I think most police departments facing something like this would be like we need to get the big guys in as well. But YouTubers, are you listening? Are you looking at and listening to the experts? Or have you found something that your subscribers are hungry for and you're just perpetuating that hypothesis and feeding them and digging around on that hypothesis and that one only? And like I said, completely ignoring the full picture. Oh, look, I know the FBI fuck. Jen Lee, hello. I know the FBI screw up. Of course they do. But you've got to have faith in the in the investigation at the start of a crime. And like I said, it hasn't even been a month yet. It's a bit early to be calling a neptitude. Don't get me wrong, I think the um, you know, the conflicting statements that have been put out by the police was a bit of a a fuck up on their behalf, but I'm also happy to give them the benefit of the doubt in that this would have been would have been a, a massive shock to them, and they probably said too much at the start and had to recant a few things, and that may have even been a direction they got from the FBI to do that. Um, but we can sit and pull anything apart if we want to. I'm not going to be overly critical. I mean, there are cases that are solved 40 years after they happen because investigators continue to pursue that particular matter and get justice for the victims. There are, there are cops that do amazing things as well. I'm not ready to lump them all in the they've fucked this up thing. I think they made a few mistakes early on, but it's not surprising when you factor in that town hasn't had a murder for six or seven years. It's a town of 20,000 people. Like, it's pretty much a little college town. I'm, I'm prepared to give them the benefit of the doubt for maybe not thinking things through more carefully at the start. Yeah, it's not, it's definitely not cold after a few weeks. <laughs> Ellie does make mistakes. They're human. Yeah, they are. Alex, hello. Senor Slash drives a Hyundai Elantra? <laughs> Where did you get that from? Random comment. Nice to see you. Oh, there's a bloody car going down our street the wrong way. That annoys me. I don't know what it is too. They're delivering a new couch to my neighbour. I might tell her. I might say, hey, yeah. Couch people came down the wrong way. People do need to wait and see. Exactly. Where did the Hyundai Elantra comment come from? The FBI tend to provide support and advice and laboratory resources. They need the police, sheriffs, whatever to do their jobs. They all work best when they work together. Exactly. And this is the thing. We all sit here on YouTube going, Oh, they're inept. They don't know how to do their jobs. Who the hell are we to say whether or not they know how to do their jobs? What if somebody is arrested and charged tomorrow? Are all of these people that have been going live saying how inept the cops are, are going to retract their statements and apologise? No. Did all the YouTubers who were pointing the finger at Athena Strand's stepmother as being the murderer and being incredibly vocal about it offer an apology when the guy who killed her was arrested? No. In fact, some of them were blatantly saying everyone thought she did it. Well, I can't stand YouTubers who generalise like that and say that everyone. No, not everyone does. Our community doesn't. We wait. We wait and see. Just because it might ring 
familiar to some other case that people have followed to actually go live and say the stepmom did it and then when it turns out she didn't to not even apologize and then they were like well if Athena hadn't have been allowed to go down the driveway it wouldn't have happened and so they just started victim blaming her so she's still guilty like disgusting Ah, oh, they're looking for an Elantra. Yeah, I used to drive one of those for one of my old jobs and they're not very fast cars. <laughs> not, the, not the best escape vehicle. Hey, stop animal cruelty. How are you, beautiful? Oh, you've been doing your eBay. Actually, yes, UK members in chat, stop animal cruelty. I don't know how we're going to be able to tell everyone about it, but if you want to plug your little eBay, go for it, stop animal cruelty. Just write like the name of it or something like that because there are some people in the UK in chat and they might want to go and check it out. We wait for facts. We sure do. I oh, know the Elantra is giving everyone a chuckle. <laughs> you can't really picture someone taking off at high speed. And, well, I suppose it's faster than Hyundai gets though. The way some people ask Ellie to handle murder cases, I make everyone a suspect, is if you think about it, not something you really want Ellie to do. Think about it. What if they come for you? Exactly. And they do try to clear people that have got, you know, rock-solid alibis. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean they're innocent. But they've got to sift through a lot of people very early on. And they kind of go, well, unlikely, unlikely, this is verified. Like, say, for example, there's GPS data of Jack S driving to Boise, Idaho, for the moment he's up on the shelf. Doesn't mean he's gone. He's not packed up in a box and put away. But crikey, it hasn't even been a month yet. I don't know if, I don't understand how people don't realise how long this sort of stuff takes. Just getting DNA and forensic results back takes weeks. I mean, technology, the way it's going, the time it takes is getting shorter. But they all want, they all want someone arrest, arrested, charged and convicted the day after it happens. It's not how it works. This is a quadruple murder in a college town. Like there's thousands of people that they've got to speak to and they, they've got to follow up every tip that they get as well, every single one. And imagine how many of these dickhead YouTubers are sending tips in. They've got to follow them up. Every single one. They can't they can't not fully investigate a case if they don't follow up every tip and every lead. Oh, what's happened, Bristol? Sorry, I've missed this. I'll just go back up. I missed a comment from you, Bristol. I got caught up on the Hyundai. It's hard because I'm bouncing from two different screens. Oh. I saw a comment further down. Hang on. Her bio mum was my niece's best friend in high school, still one of her best friends. Heartbreaking. She's from the town I'm in, from Oklahoma. I'm scrolling back up. I don't, you must have mentioned it way, way up. We've got a chatty chat. I do like this about this community too, like people come in and participate. <laughs> when, you know, when you see a channel that's got, 83,000 subscribers and there's like seven, the same seven people chatting. I missed what you said further up, Bristol. But much love to you. I mean, I'm gathering, you know, someone who was murdered too and That, is it a cold case? I, I don't know. I couldn't find your earlier comment, Bristol. 
I've got a ah oh, Athena's mum, right? Oh. I mean, I, I am so glad that one was dealt with and they got him straight away. Thank God. Um, can you imagine? There would have been months and months and months and months of just nightmarish lives on YouTube. Okay, and there's, so there's Stop Animal Cruelties, eBay, Grievers, um, especially in the um, UK, check out Stop Animal Cruelties, eBay, if you can. Be a big help. Thank you. Um, now we have Ickard Mel having Steve gone, oh, I still can't, no one can pronounce it, gone, gone Calvez. Gonsalves, Gonsalves, I think it is, saying suspects skip country without taking a DNA test. Where did that info even come from? How the hell do we know? Like, honestly. Again, remember, everyone, 5 to 10, maybe 15% of what the cops know, we know. Think about that huge chunk we know nothing about. That's what I'm focusing on. I want little little um, <laughs> golden eggs to drop out of this, this bit, this bit, the 85, 90% what we don't know. I want little nuggets to drop out of there that we can go, oh, here's a fact, let's discuss. The stuff we already know is so minimal. It, you can't solve a case with the little bit we know and the YouTubers who think they can are full of themselves. Jack Green, g'day Groover. I'm glad you found me too. We've got an awesome community. There's a fabulous bar in Hobart. I live in Tasmania. There's a fabulous bar called Jack Green's. So I'm glad you found us too because I've had some lovely evenings there with friends. Don't everyone pounce on Jack Green because his name's Jack because, you know, God forbid, oh, my God, the guy that got arrested in Moscow overnight, his first name initial is a J. It was like, really? So, of course, the J theorists, oh, a J, it must be him. But, yeah, his name is J. It's easy. I mean, I found it. I found it all, it all on the public arresting. Like, it was very easy to find this guy's info out. Um, but, yeah, I was really surprised when I went live that there weren't 30 channels all live saying they've arrested the suspect because they haven't. They've arrested a guy on domestic violence charges. There was a bit of talk about peeping Tom as well and his wife verifying that, but I was actually reading his wife's comments and couldn't see anything about that. She's also adamant he had nothing to do with the murders, by the way. But, um, yeah, I'm not naming him or talking about him online, but it was interesting to me that there weren't channels already live about it because it broke um, this morning. And I'm not going to lie, the guy's shifty as fuck. Doesn't mean he did it, but we'll see. Certainly if you were going to go... Describe a random stranger who does something horrible like this. He ticks a lot of boxes and he's done some really horrible stuff that I don't want to go into because it makes me want to puke. Um, oh, Bristol, it would have been, when you're so connected um, to crimes, and this is the other thing, like you, you're saying you couldn't watch YouTube, but so many other people are drawn to it because they just want any information or just want to hear people talking about their friend or family member who's a victim. Like I can I can understand why people do flock to social media as well. And then you've got YouTube creators going, well, they should stay off social media. They should stay off YouTube. Maybe, but until you're in those, th those people's shoes and there are channels out there that are respectful of victims and do give a shit about victims and if they stumble across one of them, well, then that's a good thing that they went to YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, who are we to judge what people do when they're going through something so horrible? I can't even imagine what it must be like. It's hard enough losing somebody you love, let alone to a murderer. It's... Empathy goes such a long way. Thank you for posting the link, Ruth. You're a champ. That is true. I can understand his fears. 
But again, Miss Kate, it does rely on whether or not it's true, you know. Let me finish playing um, Greg McCrary from Donaldson, Donaldson's Dairy. Um, I'm not taking away from him and his expertise. I just found him so reasonable and sensible and I just wish more people on YouTube would be showing a video from a former FBI profiler, don't overinterpret details. Like, hello, could that be a more telling head headline? Like, why aren't these channels? They're so into true crime. No, whatever you're into is like you're sensationalist. You're not, you, you're, what was the word? True scammers. Francesca came up with that. You're basically making a shitload of money and go for it. YouTube's set up for people to make money, but don't say you're true crime. But you won't show a video of a former FBI profiler who's asking people to not over-interpret details and you are literally over-interpreting details and cherry-picking the ones that you want to over-interpret and not taking into account you've only got access to maybe 10% of the details as well. That's all I'm saying. I know I'm going to change these people. They can keep doing it. I'm going to keep calling it out or, or providing a voice of reason in a sea of swill. And if my voice isn't the voice of reason, then people like Greg McCrary from Donaldson Dairy, his voice is. And then we'll go on to the um, Jack S stuff and then I'm going to open up the panel. Let's have a chat. Let's talk about all the things on YouTube regarding this case that we're just going because that's how it makes me feel. I can't be the only one. At some point, yeah. should this be turned over to another agency, a bigger agency, perhaps the biggest agency? Uh, well, again, it's going to be a jurisdictional issue. If they're working jointly with them, um, I, you know, I think they can probably handle this as long as they've got the resources. They're tapping into the resources of federal government and, and state police. Um, uh, hopefully, they can. Uh, hopefully, they can handle this thing. It's difficult, but uh, mm -hmm. they need to uh, need to not cave into the pressure. Move to a suspect-driven rather than an evidence-driven uh, investigation. Why? And wasn't that brilliant? <clears throat> Don't feel the pressure and go into a suspect-driven investigation rather than an evidence-based invest as evidence-driven investigation. What is everyone on YouTube? Not everyone, I just generalized. What are all these channels we're complaining? About? I'm complaining about doing suspect-driven. What do we do? Evidence-driven. I'm pretty I thought in this interview that he said the um, forensic results are just starting to come back to the investigators now as well. Um, I thought he said that, but I don't recall him saying that just from what we've watched. Maybe I missed that. I might have been fired up on some other point. Vice Council, Greg McQuarrie, thank you so much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. So there you go. Thank you, Ashley. I have to credit you because I just showed your thing. Oh, my computer's frozen. Great. Ugh. <sighs> <sighs> Just give me a moment. I don't know if you guys can still see me or not, but <laughs> my computer's completely frozen. I'm stuck on Ashley's face. Take me back to Streamer. I can't get back onto StreamYard. Let me see what's happening on YouTube on my phone. <laughs> Sorry, Grievers. Oh, it's on YouTube. I'm buffering. Sorry, Grievers. Oh, no. You've still got me. I just can't get to StreamYard to show you the Jack S stuff. Um, let me see if I can... Get rid of Ashley in task manager. Oh, bugger, it's not letting me. It's not doing the individual Chrome things. Let's see what else I can shut. Let's close all of those. Did that fix it? Nay, nay. Um, I can close this. Oh, 
Oh, this is weird. What do I do? I'm I'm still live <laughs> for you guys, but I'm stuck. I can't get back into StreamYard to open up the panel or show you the other article about Jack S, which was really, I just wanted to do because we're going to be discussing the things we're seeing people saying and why well, it's frustrating that they're just not being patient and um, whatever you want to talk about, really, unless you're going to go down the I know who did it road. We're not doing that. I'll beat you. <laughs> See if I can even get it back into StreamYard. I mean, I don't even know how to. Hang on. Uh, if I um, have to end it, I guess I can go into StreamYard on my phone. It's about the creators being ethical in their facilitation, not the exploitation of murder investigations. They forget the term investigation, not speculation. Exactly. To sum up the YouTube community, Joman says, we do not need reason, we need justice at any cost for our one, for one, uh, for once our own, for our own ego trip. Oh, I'm back. Woohoo, Ashley's gone. <laughs> Thank God. Um, yeah, so uh, let me do the Jack S thing because then I want to open up the panel. Big glass of Bailey's. It's a homemade iced coffee. Thank you very much. It's 11 a.m. The, the issue is StreamYards. I've now gone to share another tab and StreamYards is frozen again. God damn you, StreamYards. I paid good coin. Hi, green eyes. I'll just look at my phone again while I wait for it. StreamYard is the issue. You lost your shit the other day in a channel's comments with a young girl. Yeah, I did too. Someone spotted me. Who was it? I was in... Um, It could Mel's live and he had a phone in and this woman rang in and was blaming the stepmom and I lost my shit and somebody spotted me. I'm having trouble reading chat. Oh, no, that's cool. It wasn't about me. I was like, what have I missed? All the comments were, come on, StreamYard. I was, you scout, yeah, you spotted me going off in there. My little choose what to share screen on StreamYard's frozen my computer now. So we'll just, I'm reading chat on my phone. Yeah, but I went off my head about it. Um, I was furious because... His life and his phone in, it was only like probably one hour or two hours after it broke that the guy had confessed um, and it had probably been about seven hours for the cops since they'd found Athena's body. And there's already people up on a panel going, well, the mother shouldn't have kept her, like let her out of her sight. And once again it's like, your super mum, good on you. This is not about you. This wasn't your kid. Are you putting yourself in their shoes? Do you know what it's like when you live in a rural area, especially a dead-end street, and you've got all these paddocks for kids to run around in and do chores and everything else? Like, unless you put yourself in their shoes, it's not your place, lady, to have a crack at the step mum about this. Plus, if she and um, Athena had had words from time to time, and Athena was in the habit of having a little tantrum, storming out and going out into the garden and chilling out, calming down, a few deep breaths, coming back in for dinner, which is what a lot of kids do, including me. I did that as a little kid. I was the extricate myself from the shouting, calm down and come back in and have a rational conversation type kid. And if that had happened before and, it, you know, she'd been outside for maybe 15 minutes or half an hour, of course the stepmom's not going to be like one minute later going, I better go and get her. They're on a rural property with a long driveway. 
you feel ridiculously safe in those sorts of places. And kids have a very different childhood to kids that live in very heavily built up suburban areas with little yards out the front in dodgy neighbourhoods. No, you probably wouldn't let your kid play out in that yard unattended. But unless you're able to put yourself in the shoes of the people you're talking about and the way they live, and look at how Kylie Rodney's friends and family were ripped to shreds because they were a little bit alternative and the conservative folk on YouTube just couldn't relate to an alternate lifestyle and judged it. Look at Summer Wells, another kid that was had the rule of the roost in living in a rural property with lots of land and trees and places to run around. I still can't get this friggin'. Wonder what happens. Let me try refreshing. I can't even refresh. What about if I go back into my task manager and see if I can? No, and it, if I could, it will only let me close out everything. I mean, I could do that, I suppose. I suppose I could close everything out and then reboot my laptop and I can't even send myself a link. How on, can I join? If I can join... um. Oh, I'm going to reboot my laptop. Oh, my God, it's fixed it. Oh, shit. Uh, I'm coming back in. Okay. Yeah, sorry, guys. I know that it's frustrating. It's not me. It's StreamYard. It's been playing up. It was playing up last night too. I'm back. Um, it, that little frozen thing disappeared right when I was about to refresh the page. So, yeah, sorry about the frustrations with StreamYard. So, I mean, I was going to, I just really want to quickly show this article if it doesn't freeze it again. It's frozen it again. Oh, my God. Streamyard, we need to talk. Oh, it's going to get worse, Jamin, but I'm aware of how bad it is, so...
I apologize. <laughs> okay. I've got to kick myself out. Did you ever know that you're my hero? All right. I'm not going to share it. Be oh, it's now. I am going to share it. It just doesn't like this friggin' article. I'm going to read it. I'm just going to read it. Um, so some of you would know the name um, Jennifer Coffin Daffer. She comes up a lot. I mean, it's hard to forget a name like Coffin Daffer. She comes up a lot in um, on the YouTube true crime world. I'm just going to read the article, so I'm not looking at chat at the moment. But this is um, <laughs> it's going to get worse. Difficult. <laughs> We're back. Um, but yeah, her name pops up a lot. It's it's a, a one of those names. But she's a former FBI agent, and she's specifically responding to the YouTubers who are claiming that they have proof that the hoodie guy, um, Jack S, is the one who fatally stabbed the Idaho Four. And I just wanted to read it because, again, we're talking voices of reason here and I just want people to factor in all this information that a former FBI agent is giving everyone. So all these channels, if you're following channels that are covering this case and they're still crapping on about the food truck video, then you might want to think about what this former FBI agent has to say and you might want to stop watching. You might want to wait till, for them to move on to some other hypothesis. Hypothesis. So anyway, she's shared a message on Twitter and I'm not able to share it with you for some reason um, in response to allegations about Jack S and um, particularly pointing out as well that these allegations have not been officially confirmed by the police. All this stuff these YouTuber channels are running with, none of it's been confirmed. Uh, Jennifer writes, summing up proof against Jack S, 2015 photo, maybe on a, so there's the 2015 photo, which is one of the ones of him hunting, uh, maybe on a vacay with family in Africa, may have been expelled from a frat, may have been kicked out of a bar, was creepy at grub truck, not talking to media. If I tried to get someone charged for murder with this, I would have been fired. Sorry, I should have been fired. Let that sink in, YouTubers. Um, the remarks by Koff and Daff have come as police in Moscow, Idaho, continue to investigate the fatal stabbings. No suspect has been identified by police and no weapon has been found. Police have said they are actively searching for a fixed blade knife they believe was used in the crime. Since the investigation began, there's been widespread attention across social media with many looking at the hoodie guy as well as others as possible suspects in the crime. However, the Moscow Police Department publicly said that the male in the grub truck surveillance video is not believed to be involved in the crime. And then underneath her um, tweet, she's put a screenshot of something from social media going through all of the rumors about jack like someone who's who's um put hoodie jack is public opinion number one suspect and then it goes through anger issues being creepy acting suspicious um he's a hunter he's used similar knives um he drove to a cabin that morning rumor has it is now in africa it's not looking very good is all i'm saying Circumstantial evidence at this point, but it's pretty loud in my opinion. If I were Jack's family, that I would be asking some questions. Good on you, whoever that friggin' armchair detective is. So just to summarise, um, former FBI agent Jennifer Coffendaffer's statement on Twitter again, summing up proof against Jack S, 2015 photo, maybe on family vacay in Africa, may have been expelled from a frat, may have been kicked out of bar, was creepy at grub truck, not talking to media. If I tried to get someone charged for murder with this, I should have been fired. Go, Jennifer. Go, Jennifer. 
she was since um there's a lot of people that have responded on there as well supporting her but um she's since been interviewed by it and why she put that tweet out and she explained she posted it to synopsize that to synopsize that information which is completely scant of any factual basis that connects him to this crime whoever was particularly assigned to to verify the alibi, it's a very easy thing to do. They're not complicated. She's talking about how easy it is to verify an alibi. First of all, they interviewed him, which would pin him down to exactly where his whereabouts, what he says his whereabouts were. Um, they would have received signed consent to search his phone and GPS locations, as well as text messages and social media data. It's going to be very easy for them to come up with a footprint of where he was. Um, and then you've got like um, Zana's mum. Oh no, it was Kaylee's mum saying they cleared um, people too quickly. And um, she said that Common Daffer goes on to say that police can always go back and review interviews with individuals who were ruled out, even though they firmly believe he is alibied. And I believe that because they've come out publicly and stated that that doesn't mean they put on blinders. Do you think any of these YouTube channels are going to pay attention to a former FBI agent explaining how easy it is to verify alibis these days and also that even if at the moment they don't think he's considered, they haven't put on blinders. Like I said, he's still on the shelf. He hasn't been put in a box and put away in the storeroom. He's still on the shelf. He's just not the priority at the moment because at the moment the cops think the alibi sticks. That's what's going on with that. But yet there's gazillions of YouTube channels pointing the finger at Jackass 24-7. And now I can't get back into StreamYard. <laughs> but the thing is, human animal, um, uh, yeah, like no one's saying without evidence charging with murder. No, they're not, but I don't know which way you're coming from with that comment. <laughs> because I personally think that channels that are focused in on him and constantly showing stuff and critiquing it within an inch of its life is building up a belief in the YouTube communities that he did it without evidence. <laughs> I think that's exactly what they're doing. The fact that the creator might might be going, he did it, he should be convicted of murder, they're building up that narrative that he did. Exactly. Do not overinterpret. Not you, him animal, but just generally. I can't believe how many. I oh, know. But that's the thing. I went live saying I'm not going to make, not many people are going to come into my life. I mean, we got over 20 at one point, which is awesome. Thank you to everyone who's wandered in and out. Some people probably wandered in hoping I'd be one of those jackass did it. Let's have him hung, drawn and quartered in the town square by, by midday. Yeah, and the creepy card. Like why does someone have to be creepy? People loved Ted Bundy. That's why he got away with so much. I mean, he murdered people literally in plain sight. I mean, that was a bit bizarre, but he was really likable. He was charming. I mean, he was a total narcissist, so he was charming. But people thought he was good looking. He was intelligent. No one was looking at him. Why does, I mean, it's, it's creepy that someone can kill someone, no doubt about it, but why, why do suspects have to be acting creepy? Wouldn't you be, like, as far away from fucking Moscow, Idaho as you could possibly be right now if you did it? Or if for whatever reason you weren't able to leave, wouldn't you be, like, keeping a pretty low profile and, like, acting like business as usual? And the thing is I've looked at that food truck video like so many others. I can see why people go down the he's creepy road because that's what they want. So the poor guy, everything he does. But if you pair it right back, like when I first watched it, Nothing creepy about it at all. Just look like kids at a food truck after a night, a night in a pub. Didn't pick up any creepy at all. People were saying he's creepy because he didn't buy something. He mightn't have had any money. Like, 
There were plenty of times when I was at uni that we'd all go to the uni bar and everyone would buy drinks and I just literally had no money and couldn't have one. Maybe one of my friends who had an extra five bucks had spot me a drink and then the next time I had money I'd spot them one back. I mean, the amount of people that put so much importance on that, he didn't buy any food. So many people don't buy food at food trucks. You've all been out on the piss, you leave the bar, everyone's kind of walking in a group together to go to the food truck. Some people want food, others just want to hang out. Like it doesn't. Why does everything have to be creepy? He was wearing a hoodie. That's creepy. I mean, I look terrible in a hoodie with the hood up. I do probably look creepy. I probably look like the kid in Flatliners with the red hoodie. Creepy. <laughs> but no, I can't believe how big these channels are either. But that's what the that's what people want. It's not impacting their lives. They can rip someone else's life to shreds online. It's not impacting them. They can criticise a stepmom for letting her stepdaughter cool off out in the garden after an argument, which she'd done before, and come back. You know, it, they will rip anyone to shreds because it's not directly directed. It's not directly affecting them like that video that I did. But God forbid if anything horrible does happen to any of them, and touch wood, it does doesn't I mean I wouldn't wish it on anyone but if it did happen to someone who's been so critical like that imagine what we would all have to be subdued to on YouTube and god forbid anyone said anything dodgy about them we wouldn't hear the end of it it's unfortunate that some human beings are unable to relate to anything unless it directly affects them they're not factoring in how they're messing with people's lives at all doesn't even cross their minds Have the rental agents' employees been checked out? Don't know. I imagine they would. I imagine absolutely everyone. The whole pro the whole bloody town's probably being checked out. There's a lot of reason for someone to be perceived creepy by simply lacking social skills. Exactly. Yeah, food trucks are a social meeting place. Yeah, innocent until proven guilty. Whatever happened to that? You're wearing a duvet. Oh, a chunky criminal. <laughs> All right, let me drop the chat link. Uh, if anyone wants to jump up on panel, that's chat for half an hour. And then I need to go to the shops and get some food. Um. I know, and I know, human animal, that you find it weird, but it probably was. It broken up. It was probably awkward. Like again, though. I no, I know you're not saying he's a as you find. Yeah, well, and look, I, I mean, to me, I just think it's all very awkward and weird and uncomfortable. But, but then you know, the family put him in the in Kaylee's obituary and referred to him as her boyfriend. I mean, that's not to say that family members, boyfriends, exes, whatever, husbands, whatever, haven't killed people. But he was ruled out very early on. The police put him in a statement. Like he was one specifically referred to. And I reckon part of that was to try and nip, nip the internet sleuthing in the bud and it didn't work. And it doesn't help that you've then got Kaylee's mum speaking up saying he was cleared too quickly because she's now caught up in all this buzzing and whirring that's happening. I mean, I feel for them because they, if they're not being given a lot of information and there's all these YouTube channels chattering and having them on and interviewing them and everything else, they're going to be exposed to all of this stuff. But, again, we only know 5, 10, maybe 15% total of what the cops know. I'd like to think the family know a bit more than that. It's just this spiralling or ripple effect. It's so bad. I 
Oh, sorry, ex, uh, uh, Jack D. No, Jack S was referred somewhere. Um, sorry, not in the obituary. Let me think about it. Um, well, he was on the stage, wasn't he? With the parents? Somewhere. He's around them. <laughs> sorry, I did go down the Jack D road. Sorry, I mean, the. I've got, sorry, I did get that confused. Was he not on the stage? Was that Jack D? Now I'm really confused. They both live close by, the two Jacks. Jack D. But Jack S is the awkward guy at the food truck, right? Sorry. So, yeah, I did go down the wrong road talking about them just breaking up and stuff. That was my error. I'm sorry. But like I said, I I wanted... It's kind of weird. We've ended up talking about Jack S a lot more than I was planning on because I was using him as a point because of that article from the former FBI agent, the tweet. Um, but, yeah, my bad. And, yeah, there is a third Jack and then there's the Jake and then there's the Jason. Yeah, the elite family. A Jack sandwich. And like I said, how bizarre this guy that got arrested overnight, his name starts with J as well. I was like, oh, my God, because then there's also the Jeremy neighbour and there's a Josh somewhere in the mix too, I think. Um, anyway, let me just drop the link. We can have a little wrap-up chat. Not all about Jack S. <laughs> too many Js, Joman. Okay, I've got to give you an animal. It's cool. I got I make mistakes. I got confused. I've apologized. Crikey. Let me just put the link for God's sake. I've been trying to do this for ages. You can all get up and tell me what a fuckwit I am. I don't mind. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Probably because I haven't embedded myself so much into this either. Like as far as I'm concerned, like I keep saying, I'm interested in the facts. As they come out, I'm not investigating all these other people and what's going on. So I probably don't have them all committed to memory as clearly as everyone else does. Oh, yeah, and the Joe, the Joe at the food truck. What did they call him? They had to make some comment about him being a little chunky. I don't think you're being grumpy. Oh, bye, okay. <laughs> you take care too. In fact, I look. It is important to understand the speculations here, Animal, and my point is I'm not focusing on them. I'm focusing on the facts that we've got so far and that's the distinction and I'm just trying to help you see that. Like it's very important to people that are speculating. Absolutely. I'm not speculating. There's shitloads of other people I've read about that they were at college with and there's a guy that got arrested this morning. I could have gone live and just put all of his information out there too. That's just the distinction between us. Like I know that you're really into it and you'd be brilliant for fact-checking for sure, like in terms of names and who fits in where and all of that sort of stuff. My perspective on this and where I'm interested in talking about it is how, again, it's getting out of hand and if YouTubers want to speculate, go for it, but I find it difficult to get my head around how they latch onto one component that is information of the sorts, which it is because it's factual that that guy was, hoodie guy was cleared, or well not cleared but ruled out for the moment, but then they're not looking at other information that is out there. Like even the scant amount that we've got, they're cherry-picking from that to suit the narrative they're pushing. That's where I'm coming from with this. So I won't spend days looking at all of the discussions and the speculations. I'm looking at the facts. And, yeah, I made a mistake before and got the wrong jack. But I'm not that into it. Whereas if I had questions, like if I needed a sidekick, 
if we were looking at something, I'd be like, hey, human animal, who's this person? Because I know that you'd know exactly who it was because you're meticulous and thorough, like you were with Delphi. That's all I'm trying to explain. Like we're just different. We've got diff very different um, approaches and you're right into that stuff. I get it. But I also get that you're a believer in facts and evidence and so on. But, yeah, if I need a, a sidekick to point out who's who and everything, I'd have you next to me more than anyone else. We definitely share the same principles. We definitely do. Yeah, Humanimal's like a bloody encyclopedia. She's unbelievable. She's unbelievable. And, uh, I mean, if I went back to being a criminal lawyer and I needed a clerk, I'd get her <laughs> to be my clerk for sure. Because I'd be like, can you get to that page with the evidence of such and such? And she'd be like, yep, it's page 383. Boom, there you go. She'd be brilliant. No, and look, plain text is always difficult too, human animal, um, especially like when you're live, as you would know, and you go off on a tangent and then you see a comment and you've kind of got to rewind to wherever you might have been when you said something that led to that comment and then or the comment might still be on the point you're talking about but it's a bit out of context because it was responding to something earlier it's hard she is brilliant and she's eloquent and beautiful and funny no i don't i mean i'm the ultra conservative on the opposite not the opposite end because the human animals really good at like you're sleuthing for sure but not blaming anybody and also, like you said, you you got bad vibes from Hoodie Guy. I got awkward vibes from Hoodie Guy, not creepy vibes. To me, they just all look like college kids that have been out on the town. I've been one of them. I've been one of those. And there's always that weird, I mean, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. There's probably half of that town that you could sit and look at and find things about them that were weird and odd and creepy. The fact that, you know, so many of them are hunters, like that's a bit hard to get your head around at the start, seeing all these photos of people with animal carcasses and gizzards and, you know, I mean, I'm starting to think Moscow is a bit of a town where things go bump in the night for sure, like the skinning of the dog, like just, and this guy that got arrested overnight, I don't want to go down that road again, in fact, even just talking about the skin about buddies made me, making me feel sick. But the guy that got arrested overnight has done some really horrific stuff as well. It's a creepy town. It's a creepy town. Let's blame the town. Send in the mariachi band. Oh, gosh, take care driving, Miss Kay. I'm going to bail too. I think I need some food. <laughs> I'm so sorry, stop animal cruelty. As soon as I mentioned, buddy, I thought of you. I'm so sorry. Um, but, yeah, you know, like you, you, we could find so many people in that town that would be odd. This guy that got arrested overnight is creepy. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Like I'm more than happy to use that word to describe him. I mean, he's been in jail for murder, so, you know, I don't think it's, I don't think I'm out of line saying he's creepy and he's just been arrested for domestic violence, also creepy and revolting. Oh, you don't want to drop, you'd rather listen. Oh, bless you, Miss Kay. <laughs> That's such a compliment. Thank you. I wonder if Jack S thought he would get to give the girls a lift home knowing their neighbours. He heads off in direction of car park. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. I don't know. It all just was a bit sort of, I don't know, they they just, not him, but the girls were clearly drunk. As, I mean, I've been that loud drunk girl with my friends. I know that vibe where your head is and when you're that wobbly and you do just want to grab food and get out of there and stuff like I've been there many times and if there's some sort of person hovering around and sort of going sure you don't want me to give a lift and you've already organized a lift and like I can kind of see 
But you've got to put yourself in the, their shoes in that moment too. Like it was all late night, boozy, student, messy stuff. Messy stuff. Uh, there's a guy. Um, no, sweetheart, I don't think you're attacking at all. And I don't. I hope you don't think I'm attacking you back. I just, um, I try to make a point and then I realise I may not have been clear enough and then I feel like I'm berating you, but I'm really just trying to reiterate my point again, if that makes sense. Oh, plain text is very hard. That's why panel chats are good. We'll do some soon. I think it's easier to understand. I'm going to actually wrap things up. Um, but, yeah, I think that let's do some panel chats because at least we can gauge where everyone's coming from and tone and stuff. <laughs> let's try that next time. Um, yeah, a guy got arrested overnight in Moscow, um, a guy who's been in jail for murder. And like I said, if you did a list of textbook features in a murderer, he's ticking a lot of the boxes. But I'm not going live and talking about him or naming him or anything like that. I was surprised that... Um, I mean, I'm in Tasmania and I knew about it. I'm surprised that there weren't 20 YouTube channels live talking about him and blaming him, accusing him. I mean, I've got all of his information and, yep, you could. I mean, his stuff is, if you want to compare, let's compare him to Hoodie Guy. My money's on the guy that got arrested overnight. That's that's seriously just from the, his history, his rap sheet, all of that sort of stuff. Even the, his demeanour in the mug shot, all of it. If I was just going to go, okay, well, there's hoodie guy and there's this guy, which one are you going to? I'd be putting my money on arrested guy, even though he's innocent until proven guilty. Well, he hasn't even been charged with the murders. It's, on an un, it's completely unrelated. But he's still a piece of work, which is proving, well, not proving, but that's my point. Like there's plenty of other people in Moscow that I reckon are, way dodgier than um, some college kids. Here's the Glamazon. How dare you look this <laughs> beautiful? I'm, I'm just about to go and walk the dog up to the shops. Cute. But I thought I'd just quickly come on here and say that was a very good uh, live today. And Thanks, you it is so right that if you searched for people like Gary, is it McClary or whatever his name is, Oh, and you look Greg, for those. Greg McQuarrie from Donaldson's Dairy. The, <laughs> the, the FBI profiler. The FBI guy, right? You try and find, yeah. well, who, where is he appearing? Whose channel is he on and everything? Yeah, you're not going to find him on a lot of particular channels, right? No. And he'll be, but, you know, I, and I'm just really getting very disappointed with News Nation as well because they seem to be coming... They are what's the, what's the word? Um, it's a bit. I mean, they skewed. are really re they're victimizing the victims' families by yeah. putting these ear wounds in there about it. The case is going cold, Steve. What are you going to do? I know it's so irresponsible, and yeah, that um the little video that I did the other day about how social media impacts crimes, you know, criminal and civil matters and all those victims family members all speaking about how it affected their cases um i've also started doing one on the media and their irresponsible reporting and it's pretty scary but you know like when you know when a, a, Sorry. a crime happens and people start lawyering up and everyone's like oh they must have done it. They've got a lawyer. It's so good to get a lawyer early on, even if you're the parents of a victim, because the first thing the lawyer is going to say to you is don't speak to anyone, especially on YouTube, yeah. ever. Don't. Exactly. Like, you know, if you've got an issue with the information from the cops, there are services and people in place that you can speak to about that and they have internal counselling services and all sorts of things that can help with that even if it's just a case of having a meeting and they all sit down and the cops explain where they're at and why they're not giving more information at the moment. And, you know, that there's there are systems in place to help people that are directly impacted by these crimes. But, yeah, I feel for these parents because I understand they want answers, but they also 
they've now got all these YouTubers t- talking about how it's all going cold and everything, and it's just not. It hasn't even been a month. Yeah. They, I mean, they've had a police liaison that they just weren't happy with because they're like, they're not telling us anything. Well, when they're going to the media and telling them every little thing that they're told, yeah, the liaison is realizing how do we how do we manage this family and manage this situation? At least a lawyer, they might trust a little a lawyer better and actually take the lawyer's advice on what to say and do with the media and how to promote the case. And I made a video the other day about this, actually. You can, can you wait, Bubby? Um, um, I have to check it out. I just want to say about well, a UK well, lady too. It was just um, the gist was, you know, there are people that do manage to walk that line and that would be the families of Delphi where they have kept open relationships with law enforcement, always been openly supportive of the people that are trying to solve their case no matter what they must think personally and they've tried to manage social media as well they've always been coming out to keep everything in you know the current zeit in the um ether you know current i can't speak at the moment i'm a bit sick um you know we're and and, and 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 your brains <laughs> my brain, my brain's like, give me food. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you go and get your lunch and do your shopping. Oh no, no, uh, I'm, um, but no, it's really interesting stuff because, um, yeah, I think like with what you're saying, and I'll definitely have a look at the video too. But even with Delphi, um, you know, the fact that they got him, and hopefully there's a conviction and you know a really harsh sentence handed down. That's still a reason to acknowledge the fact that they never gave up, even if he was an interviewed right at the start and they had to do a full circle. There's so many cases like that where, like, in entire there's a town in Australia where there was a hideous murder in Shepparton and they interviewed every single man that lived in Shepparton and mm. the murderer was one of them and they had to keep going full circle and eventually they got him. But, you know, they were criticised too for, well, you spoke to everyone. But these people are criminals, like they're bullshitters. Um, they have yeah. people that, that provide alibis. They've got spouses who turn a blind eye. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah. the fact that they didn't give up um, on the case in Shepparton, it was a guy who worked in an abattoir and the, his sort of nickname was Mr Stinky um, because the victims right. who survived his attack said yeah. that they could. he smelt weird. But um, the fact that they ultimately mm-hmm. got him, a bit like with Delphi, you know, is that not... <coughs> what we're all after at the end of the day like we want the person yeah, there's, to not be... enough, there's never enough praise people are so quick to criticize and all these youtubers that just sit there analyzing everything and pulling to pieces they're just they're so misguided they're so direct deluded they're delusional right yeah. but they're so convincing to their viewers in the way that they present very cunning, manipulative. Some them, and some of them are intelligent, beautiful, slick in the way the they do it all, you name it. And everyone just gets hooked in, especially when, I mean, I can understand it away when we see how the mainstream media, just even News, news Nation, like how they're, they're going. It's not surprising that Americans are looking for their news in other places, but yeah. these YouTube have no qualifications they're not journalists or anything they're just people like you and they i who've worked out how to turn on the dream yard yeah. <laughs> I they mean, call always investigators journalists researchers you know well, and betty handing out media classes <laughs> uh, i think we both, um, we both also might to... not be sold thoroughly right because basically what the affidavit says and what the charges say is that Richard Allen is allegedly the person on the bridge and the person who abducted the girls from that bridge, and he's charged with felony murder and the the sick the um whatever it is that they call it the num um that type of murder relates directly to a murder that comes out of something like an abduction or some sort of assault, not really wow. intentionally being murder, and they've left it at that now they you know there could be a lot lot more but it's it's absolutely 
hundred percent missing from the affidavit going any further than that. Right. You know, and then you've got McClelland, the prosecutor, making these statements about, you know, the other actor involved or other actors and um it's still mm. it's still batshit. <laughs> to be honest, that case. But, you know, they may or may not have the man. You know, the bullet that was found, they didn't seem yeah. to be specifically looking for this bullet at Ron Logan's, not that they might put it in a search warrant expecting that this important piece of information could be released to the right. public. But they were looking for things that seemed to relate to CSAM on Ron Logan's property, electronics, and they were looking for clothing and they were looking for blood and fluid, seen and unseen. But, you know, Ron Logan doesn't have this particular gun, a 40 caliber gun. Maybe that's why they sort of dropped him like a hot coal, but this was the FBI pursuing him and surely they knew about this bullet. I don't know, it's, it's quite a bizarre case still, Delphi. Yeah, yeah. okay. See, this is why I'd have you as my law clerk because you'd just be yeah. sitting there and I'd be like, what was the date of that thing? And you'd be like, <laughs> I keep hearing things all the time, people saying that Richard Allen came forward in 2017 and it was on this date and he told them he was wearing these blue clothes and it's like, no, <laughs> no, at that time he said he was there, he saw some witnesses and he was between this time, he didn't mention anything about the clothing. You have to think, what was he actually asked? Was he asked to provide the clothing that he wore on that day? They instantly should have asked for that. What were yeah. you wearing? We're going to come and collect it, mm. right? It's very bizarre, this, this you know, situation with Galpai. Definitely. Yeah, but yeah people are misquoting the affidavit left, right and centre. It's so frustrating. It's like just print it out and have it in front of you. This one could also end up being like that too I mean who knows you know like I as awful as it was that they found Athena's body so quickly and got the confession out of that absolute piece of work um it was a relief in one way that you know YouTubers weren't going to latch onto that story and Summer Wells it I guess into you know two years down the track almost for her yeah. um but it was hideous that it took that kind of a conclusion for it just to nip it in the bud but um but yeah as soon as that happened there were still people in a lot of youtube channels still criticizing the mother and still saying she should be held responsible for letting this child out of her sight and this is this is the girl that was abducted by a yeah. FedEx driver or something yeah yeah so and you know it's just so random very it's and all terrorism, you know, it's terrorism on the family unit. Oh, it's hideous. Mm -hmm. It's hideous. Um, and I did hear someone who knew him being interviewed, and he had all the markers of someone sadly that was gonna go down that road. Um, you know, but again, hindsight, like people have people in their lives and they go, Yeah, you're a bit weird and you're a bit off. But this guy was escalating and Mm. Yeah, it's, it's bloody horrific. But that's the thing too, like because so many, the majority of cases the victims do know the perpetrators, people are very reluctant to consider right at the start that it could be a stranger, which is like with the Idaho 4, I keep saying, you know, like everyone that says, oh, it has to be someone who knew them because it was so personal. Well, Ted Bundy didn't know his victims. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like it's ridiculous to, to write off strangers you know, at, at where King Street is, how it's situated, the mm -hmm. hill. That little mm -hmm. house was just, it was like a little beacon. You could see everything going on for hundreds of metres around. Yeah, they so many different properties to live there, there. Um, Coming and going, partying, drunk, late at night. They can see when the yeah. lights go off, they can see people moving around. Mm -hmm. um, from Jack D's apartment, which as you look at the house, one yeah, house in that sort one of house. the two he stories right. sort of brick. He's a, he Sorry. could see into Kaylee's bedroom. Not into yes, into Kaylee's onto that side of the house. Yes. Yeah. Whereas Jack and Jack Jake uh, Jack 
S could yes. see the other side or could just on the other around. side, the same as Jeremy. Uh, yes, he's we're in the same apartment block as Jeremy. Yeah. So, so, you I know, I, know think a <laughs> I know a bit. I just, I just got the jacks wrong. I wish there weren't was, so many Jacks and Jameses. No, and well, I, I just wanted over. to quickly correct you about that. Before, no, I'm glad you did. No, 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 I'm glad you did. The one on stage. Yeah. yeah, no, 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 I'm glad you did. And thank you for pointing that out too. So, And that's what I said. Like, but, I think if we ever, if I ever with this channel, if there are facts that come out and there are certain players involved in whatever we're looking at or discussing, I'll definitely want you next to me because you'll be able to go, <laughs> well, I mean, Virtually, but you know, you'll if be able to one point. That I follow, I'll generally follow it thoroughly. Is that if not for me, I don't for, like them at all. For me, a huge part of it is um, and it's very methodical and it's probably the lawyer in me, but um, you know, the initial sort of shock of what happened and so on, and just sort of educating myself that this this crime has occurred, and then as facts come out, so when the police sort of said, Take Hoodie Guy off the table, I did. That's just where I, I just don't go down that road no, anymore. No, that's right, yeah. But at even the time. I, sorry, even though I'm mindful that there's a gazillion YouTubers covering it and I bounce around a bit because I do want to sort of see if there's anything um, they're discussing that's worthwhile, but I don't get hooked into it. Like I, the first thing I do yeah. whenever I'm following a case is see if there's any news on it um, or any yeah. new police statements, that's it. But, but, yeah, so having you, at least if there's things that we look at down the track that you can point out who the major players are and how they all fit in. I mean, it took everyone weeks just to, um, you know, sort of get their head around, like Kylie Rodney, how to spell her name, let alone all the other stuff that was being discussed. But And they are sparking that up again, you know that, right, with Nick, um, the roadside assistance guy. So no, there was a really yeah, well, lady that I told you about that maybe pretended to have a conversation with him and she just put it out in like this oral form of her just reading out like a transcript. I mean, yeah. that could be anything. And now this possibly fake screen print, you know, uh, um, no, screenshot of a GPS map of his yeah. phone for apparently Saturday. It means nothing. You know, right? But this is all this evidence is starting to come out that yes, he was at Boca. He's a real person, and people just lap it up. That there's no. Well, I nearly put um, cynicism. I nearly put Kylie Rodney in the search bar. At yes, out of curiosity, just to like sort of going, let's just see if people are still talking about her. And then I was like. No, you don't want to do that. Of course there will be, and you've just confirmed it. They clearly are. It's yes. just awful. And I, there's enough going on in the world. Like that's the other thing with true crime people um, on YouTube. Like rather than just flogging the same case over and over and over again, like Kylie Rodney's, which really everyone just needs to move on from that and let her friends and family grieve in peace um, and let her rest in peace. But they sort of, it's almost like they need another vile crime to occur before they'll quickly move on. And it's yeah. like, what? If you're truly into true crime, you'd do a, let's look back at, you know, the most famous cold case ever, Jack the Ripper, and do a show on that. You know, like you'd, if you really cared about true crime, the old fashioned genre, it wasn't just about cases that were happening as, as you were living. You talked about old cases all the time and cold cases and missing persons cases and cases that were solved. But they can't do that. They just have to keep flogging a dead no, horse. No, they want the sensation of the moment that they can have some chance to control, you know, control a na narrative and uh, it's su such vampirish behaviour, right? It is. It's ghoulish. Yeah. Um, Jamin thinks I should offer you a job, human animal. <laughs> <laughs> Jamin, if I wasn't a community lawyer, part time at that, and if you know anything about lawyers and community lawyers, we don't earn money. Um, I would, <laughs> but I'm definitely well, gonna, I'm definitely gonna get human animal to jump up for all the fact checking for sure. 
Um, don't mess with these Aussie YouTubers. Well, yes, Australia's gain was a human animal moved here from New Zealand, but we're claiming no, there is a... Oh, you guys are just being too nice. <laughs> Tori, what a love with you. I idea that if I do go back to New Zealand, I, I, I might even be able to work for my sister who does all sorts of things. Oh, well, there you Lord. go. Is she as glamorous as you? I don't think, I think she, yeah. See, I talk, I know, like I share the principles that you have and the, the ethics and I understand where you're coming from, but I know that I do go that step further, right, because I'm still, yeah, because I still like to just really discuss yeah. something and describe and it. it. Like I said, if you were in my house with a glass of wine, we'd be doing it. I just won't do it on my channel. I can't. Yeah, no, you've got, um, you've got only your reputation in life. And well, it's not even that. It's just, I guess, for me with where my channel is, is that that's what I want to do because there's clearly some people that do just want to hang out with reasonable people who want to talk about the facts and who can be patient and so on. But the other mm. thing I was going to say with you is that even though you are in that sort of um, more, way more analytical and looking into it a lot more and speculating, you're still reasonable and realistic. You're not like speculating and pointing the finger and accusing someone of doing it and that's the there's a fine line there like I don't have a problem that like I said if we were all sitting around my table right now um discussing this case we would all be theorizing and I personally right now would be talking about the guy that got arrested last night just based on what I know about him and yet mm. there are people already saying no way he didn't do it like he's got a rock solid alibi it's our neighbor you should be looking at was the word that is what one of the comments his wife said after he was arrested. Mm. So now everyone wants to know who the neighbour is. And it's um, it's about just to put everyone's mind at rest, it's not in a 500-metre radius of the house where the students lived. It's nobody that lives nearby. But they mm. have got a neighbour who was um, putting stuff in the rubbish and bleaching his car, which had the wife of this guy that got arrested last night feeling very suspicious and she rang the cops about it so watch this space but um yeah. but yeah but you're um responsible with the information um even when you're speculating you're not you're not crossing that line that so many people on youtube do constantly because yeah the speculation I, I try to be. i'm not always good and i i often regret i regret it when i do misspeak you know i really do or i get a bit too carried away but I do try to be. I'm learning to be much more mindful. Yeah. Yeah, but you still um, can see this stuff and you also know crime. Like you're not just somebody who stumbled across um, my favourite murder podcast a couple of years ago and now they're these passionate true crimers and they've they've been their entry into the true crime world on YouTube is so far from what original true crime was all about. Right, um, and they've got nothing. Yeah, they've got no concept of the OG world of people who are into it because the the true crime um, genre used to be very closeted. And I think I've mentioned a few times, you know, be at a party and someone else in the room would start talking about crimes, and you'd be like, "Oh, someone else here who's into crime." Because most people would look yeah. at me like, "Why do you want to talk about murder while we're having dinner?" And I'd be like, "I love it. I mean, I don't love murder, <laughs> but I'm into true crime." So if you found yeah, someone it's not else, the sort of, it, yeah discussion a lot of now, everyone everyone's into it you know this whole team in fact even um the tv show that my niece told me to watch because she said oh you love true crime you'll love it and it's the one with steve martin and martin short it's on paramount plus i think or disney plus and it's three people that live in an apartment building in new york and there's a murder and they're described as true crime buffs and they all listen to this podcast they sleuth the murder they completely ignore the cops telling them to back off and they've got it yeah. and they're investigating it. And they're, and it's like, that's not true. They're sleuthers. And yeah. there's nothing wrong that with being another sleuth. genre altogether. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, look, if we were having a little chat around the table, of course I'd be speculating. And like I said, I'd probably be blaming the dude who got arrested last night. But in terms of on my channel, I think there is need for some channels that are happy to just be old-fashioned true crime and just wait for information. And there's a few of us. I'm not the only one. I mean, you know, you know Grey Hughes is a typical OG true crime. But, in fact, he doesn't even refer to himself as true crime now either because mm. that whole mm. genre has just been... 
Well, I was going to say, Jamin said um, he loves that I don't have a big ego, but on that apparent first impression, harsh surface. Oh, <laughs> oh. You're a very humble and mindful person. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh. It's okay to speculate in private but not in public unless you're responsible with the, with the information like him animal is. Because like people are still going to go and spread it. It's still being a repeater. You don't know what that person is going to use with what you say. I mean, and yeah. you know, I don't mean to be blunt when I pull people up. I'm just wanting, actually stop, no, this, 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 and this. And if you're going to talk about it, make sure you're basing it on that, you know. And in real life, coming across true crimes and everything, it's it's so disappointing sometimes the things that they tell you about crime. So often you'll hear things like, Oh, thank God they got the guy that killed Madeline McCann. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> right? Because yep. that's the, that, that they're believing all the bullshit. They don't well, really saw, know the case at all. I saw somebody in the chat. In the... In the... Sorry, Sorry, I, I can't yeah. hear you very well, so I keep talking. No, there was you. someone in the chat yesterday that's still crapping on about how Chris Watts had help. I'm just like, my God. My God, and Chris Watts took the fall for somebody else. You reckon? You reckon? Who does that? Yeah, I'll plead guilty to everything. I'll go to jail for it. I'll protect it. Bullshit. Like, it's. Just, I learned when I did Breakfast Radio, my program director, who was an incredibly um, experienced, wonderful man with a brilliant career in radio who just by luck ended up um, back in Tassie where he was born and raised and was able to pass on his wisdom to all of us. But one of the things he told us that I've never forgotten is people hear what they want to hear. So everything that we said when we were live, when our mics were live, no matter what our intentions were or our tone, what we were trying to say, there will always be people out there that will hear what they want to hear. And this is exactly the same with YouTube. People hear what they want to. Like I'm not here to change um, how people run their channels or what they do or who even supports them. But I still think if there's people that just want to hang out and be reasonable, then I'm opening up my home to them. <laughs> but when the camera goes off and we have a dinner party, if something's happened and we feel like speculating, bring it on because that's fun too. And I like playing devil's avocado in those sorts of conversations. But I mean, crime crime can be really wild and crime can be very bizarre. But it's not always, and, you know, it's not always Occam's Razor either. But, I mean, for example, with the Idaho 4 murders, yep. the, t- the type of person that commits this crime that isn't caught immediately probably is someone like a Ted Bundy, not yeah. a food, a, a grub truck guy, right? Yeah. That, you know, yeah. We, we, there are a lot of young murderers, teenagers, I young personally men. think whoever did it has not, left town weeks ago. Possibly left town straight away, yeah. Because, um, yeah, and they're not factoring any of that in and this is the problem. And the, they are honing in on people and you kind of go, like again with Jack S, all these people that are live day after day saying it's definitely him and, there's chat forums online and they're all saying it's him, Reddit, you name it, like, oh, it's got to be him. But nobody's just going, how come the police so early on said they don't think he's involved? Why would that be? And they're not like, oh, that's because the I, I think they did miss him. a little bit timing-wise because they literally hadn't, when they made that announcement, they, they really, the reason why they should have just simply said, look, no one is cleared. The same way in Delphi they've said for six years, no one is cleared. They won't even say the families are cleared because, because you know, and, and I think they did misspeak in that regard and but they it made say people cleared. really look at them more because they knew, well, shivers. They didn't even find that footage themselves. Amelia, Kaylee's sister, found grub truck footage. I don't know. She found, I don't... Other footage. She found <laughs> the driver. <laughs> They came out, did a press conference within one day, were saying they're cleared. They didn't even know who the bugger was. Oh, she's frozen. That's <laughs> She's so beautiful when she's frozen. Guaranteed. Oh, you're back. <laughs> but, you know, so, I, I, yeah, 
I don't know, but it, yeah, they but may the point have. Is this, they've got a digital. They've got his digital footprint, and they didn't say the wording wasn't cleared. But what I, all I'm saying is like that article I was reading out earlier for the from the former FBI agent. Like they've spoken to him. They've got his digital footprint, and that, my point isn't. I get all the stuff about the sister getting the video and everything else, but my my point that I'm trying to make is the channels that are blaming him and constantly going in and out about it are not once saying the cops have spoken to him, what information have they got about him? That's the, that's the issue I've got. Rather than, like I, and I did mention somewhere, I don't know if you're in the live at that point or not, that, yeah, there's there were definitely, there's been some errors along the way, but I'm happy to give them the PD the benefit of the doubt because it's yeah. been seven years since they've had a murder um, and they, yeah, they, did fuck up a little bit but in terms of my point is you can't pick just the video and rip him to shreds and say it's suspicious but not also take into fact that the cops the reason they don't consider he's involved in the crime which is the wording that they use they've interviewed him they've got his digital footprint if he said he was driving to Boise Idaho and he's two and a half hours away from Moscow between three and four when it when the murders occurred He's got an alibi. Like, why aren't they looking at the whole tiny bit of information we've got, not just part of it? That's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, they would have by now, yes. But initially they probably hadn't and that's the, that was the problem. But by but now, yes, sure. And, you know, people just know. need to let them do their job. I mean, it is strange, okay, you'd have to think, okay, well, he's gone back to his flat and he's just grabbed maybe a pre-packed bag, was it? And then driven, he hasn't decided to get some sleep. Was he not drinking that night? Then what was he doing not drinking that night? He wanted to stay lucid for something? You know, there's all these questions that you can bring into it. And then why would he drive up to Boise to get there at 7? What was so important to get there at 7? He wouldn't have been there at 7, maybe well, 8. I guess the family had been there. But yeah. these are all this is and this is where I won't go down that road. That's for because the I can also the I can road. also sit here and offer a reply to every single thing you've said so far. Like he clearly looks sober in that footage at the truck compared to everybody else around him. Mm. He's not wobbling or anything. He walks off, there's no signs of it. But I could clearly argue that he and the family, if the rumor that he's gone to Africa is true, they were flying to Africa and that was always the plan that he'd drive up to be up there in time to catch the plane with his parents. I mean, there's you can debunk anything by looking yeah, at all It's a long way to go, you know, to go to Africa when they've still got one week of lessons, right? Um, but oh, no, but wait, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Because I'm not so even I doubt buying. So going to Africa. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not even buying the Africa thing, and that's why I don't want to go down this road. Because we're doing yeah. exactly what I don't want to do. Yeah. What all I'm trying to say is, without bringing in all these questions that you've got, which are all valid, and they're all part of speculating, but I don't want to do that. All I'm saying is, these people can't cherry pick the tiny bits of info we've got and then run yeah. with the narrative. They've got to look at what all of what we've got. And we don't know exactly when the police spoke to them. We don't know whether yeah. the cops did actually access that food truck footage as well or not. We don't know these things. We don't know what, yeah. like, timing-wise, how quickly they learned, where is GPS? Well, like, there's so many other questions, which is why... So we can't debate it yet. Speculating. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. just where... Um, but people will, yeah. They've made up all these assumptions. Yeah, and I feel that and, if and you know, as an exercise, we could come up with a hundred assumptions for either way, right? Yeah. yeah. So why yeah. would he be sober? Is it because he was and driving or he wanted to be you know, and it's just it doesn't get anyone anywhere. Well it does. It, it gets him if he's innocent, it gets him in a position that now if anyone ever Googles his name for the rest of his life, there's gonna be yeah. a shitload of YouTube videos accusing him of murdering his friends. Like Well, even it does just impact. accusing him of being of being the useless one in the family, the underachiever, the one that will never amount to anything, you know. But how do so, we know any of that? That hasn't come well, from this his family. this is what they've, they've said, right? Oh, right, this is, yeah, okay. You know, this is part of his psyche and his motive is because, you know, there's something wrong with him. Everyone else is brilliant. They've worked hard to earn degrees. They, they work in very um, important places. And then along comes this little one, right? And, you know, he's not the jock that the older brother is. 
and he's not going to be the medical doctor and he's not this and that and he's always awkward and that's what's being said so you know now he's got to go out and operate as an adult yeah, exactly. in business it's unfair yeah it's unfair and people are gonna end their lives and people are going to their lives are going to be ruined all the kids that were falsely accused with Kylie Rodney now, if you type their name into Google, it comes up that they are alleged murderers. And, you know, Jagger. They have to change their names. Every, Children have been but, having to change their names for about 10, 15 years when they want to start. It's disgusting yeah. that they have to do that. Why is that okay? Because, you know, people go, oh, well, they can just change their names, not you. But I've heard people say that. No. Like, Why should they Why have should to? They have to? Their name should never have been tarnished. Everyone's innocent until proven guilty. That's the beauty of judicial systems and that's the foundation they they exist upon and it's not okay to mess with people's lives and that's what this speculation does and yeah. you know the fact you've got a former FBI agent tweeting saying look at all these rumors in this particular tweet and the very last sentence if I charge anyone with murder based on this information I should be sacked like listen you know the experts are going all this stuff, and it spreads like wildfire. It's like Chinese whispers. And the next thing you know, you've got mm. innocent people being slandered all over the internet and their lives are essentially being ruined, not to mention the people that love them and care about them. The fallout's it's, massive. Yeah. The ripple effect is never-ending. And they they shouldn't have to do that. They shouldn't have to change their names and move town. They're teenagers whose families had to pack up and leave Truckee because of what happened with Kylie Rodney and how YouTubers were giving them death threats. Yeah. I've heard that there are, I've heard people that there are, they people are sitting outside you know? Jack S's parents' house with guns, visible guns in what? their car. Yeah. That, I mean, this is the thing. There's stuff that gets thrown out there and you just go, well, if you're going to take everything else without any looking into facts or whatever, like who knows what's going on. But this is the sort of stuff that's happening. And guilty people yeah. are going to start walking free and reoffend. Like it's just the potential of this dangerous way that these YouTubers are addressing cases as they're being investigated. And the, I mean, how it can even be controlled or stopped, I don't know. But it really bothers me that innocent people's lives are being ruined innocent people might take their own lives because of this other innocent people might lose their lives because a guilty person walks free like yeah it's serious stuff it's really the narcissism serious. it's narcissism and it's it's antisocial personality disorder these people they are they are so focused on what they're getting what they can get and gain they just have zero social con conscience zero empathy yeah and unless that happens and to them and then we're going to get manipulative <laughs> yeah oh, you know there's um you've got you know people that will insert themselves into cases by you know hunting out people that are going to be witnesses and they, they have them interviewed on their channels i know and yeah. you know what i do with those people human animal I, as a defence lawyer, if they were key witnesses for the prosecution, I'd get them struck from the proceedings because they spoke to somebody on YouTube and yeah. they and gave, then they someone gave might two be... inconsistent stories so they're unreliable witnesses. Piss yeah. off. They are handing defence lawyers so many opportunities to get key witnesses struck and the oh, prosecution... Oh, they're advocates. They're the voices for the voiceless. Yeah, I know. they care about the victims. Oh, I know it's shocking. I mean, we should. It's a shame we live so far apart. We'd have a lovely time sitting outside with a well, not today, but one day in a nice weather with a cheese platter and a nice cheeky rosé. I reckon having a chat about all of this, speculating. I think the moral, the takeaway for today, everyone, is speculate all you want. If you're going to speculate online, be responsible with how you do it. Um, but when the lights, cameras and everything are off and you're around your friends and family, go for it. Go for broke. Just keep it off social media, offline. Because I'm, I'm, I'm just so terrified for where this is heading and it's spiralling. And yeah. 
over the last four years, like we all thought what happened with AD and Chris Watts was bad. Look at it now. Look at it now. There's millions of ADs out there now. They're multiplying. Yeah. It's terrifying. They, they see a chance to, yeah, they, to, to make money and to be, and, and they love, I mean, people could say, I love the sound of my own voice. Okay, it's probably true maybe. You know, I love to give my opinion, but, you know, they really love the attention. Like, I don't like the attention, though. Like, it's a really, it's a tricky thing. But people love the attention. They want to elevate themselves, not for any greater good, but just purely as a, as a making a, a living of people that they can manipulate. And, mm -hmm. and all those people are that are, harmed murdered the victims families and things all those people are to them are resources yeah they're just resources and assets to yeah, they're maneuver not, they're not real people they don't have real lives they don't have feelings they're not grieving it's scary man it's scary yeah, and also yeah. look at how many of them um hide behind avatars and people subscribe yeah. and throw them so much money without ever knowing who's behind that little avatar that's just flashing on the screen. Yeah. How can you put so much faith in someone? Like I, for me, like I love being able to see the only creators I follow are people that cam up because I like to see their faces and I like to, I mean, clip channels are different, but channels that are covering things because I like to see people's faces. You can see if they're being sincere. I, I picture half of these people that are behind avatars the whole time just counting their money while they're talking and throwing money in there and laughing, like, keep it coming, keep the money coming. This is what I'm picturing. I'm sure detective that's there gambling online. Vinny, Vinny Alex, Not Vinny lightly goes to the toilet while live. <laughs> takes takes <laughs> everyone with it. So did he, though, and he had a shower as well. Oh, my anyway. God. Um, yeah. Jomin loves your vase. He oh, this says, is a um, Jarrah Burr. It's a Jarrah Burr. It may, may even be from Tasmania. I just I didn't put my phone into my tripod and that's why it keeps falling over and everything. Sorry about that. And it's been wobbly well, you've and got to, You've got to take your papa for a walk and I've got to get my little butt to the market to get some yummy stuff. Um but thanks for jumping up. And, yeah, seriously, like if we ever do get more facts or footage or something like that and I need someone to point out who everyone is, I'll definitely get you to do it because you're <laughs> that component of what you're doing, like your, your ability just to remember so much detail, like even earlier talking about Delphi and naming someone who didn't even own that particular type of gun, I'm just going, my God, your capacity to just store information and then link it all together, it's brilliant. I mean, you should be an investigator. I don't know um, where that comes from because I've never been able to study in my life. I, I think it has to be, I think it's a thing where I have to be really interested. Yeah. If yeah, I'm not interested in it, I won't pay the attention. Yeah. Well, you know. But I don't know how I have that ability, but I just, I just guess I do. But I think it's because I spend more time doing it. That That's all it is. It's repetition. Yeah, but also I think when you're driven too by justice for victims, which is underlying in both of us and it's very strong, that even though you go a bit more out into the speculating world than I do, like I said earlier, you're you're responsible with it. You're not, even if you have, even if your hinky meter is spinning out of control and you're like, it's him, it's him, it's him, you're not then going live every five minutes naming and shaming someone and you know, delving into every aspect of their social media and their life stories and everyone who knows them and, you know, like that's where I get really frustrated by it are the ones that just run with something and they have no, they're, they're irresponsible with the tiny, just the tiny bit yeah. that we know. They and I always, have no analytical skills and they don't even, you know, they'll often put forward this person's charges and they've got the completely wrong person talking about someone's record or marriage, it's completely wrong person. It's so irresponsible. They don't they don't have the ability to analyse because they're so keen to move yeah. it forward, to get it out, to, to plant some seeds so that they've got people hooked. And if they're wrong, they, they just sort of dismiss it. They just carry on. 
Well, that's what I was about to say. You know, we think alike. So, because the thing that really bugs me too is how quickly when they stuff up is swept under the carpet and the next day they're live about a new case. Like nothing ever happened. Even um, yeah. me, me calling out what happened in that courtroom a few, well, last week with the hot mic or two weeks ago um, with the hot mic and um, and all the YouTubers unmuting and everything else. And like, very, I mean, they, they all went live that night and threw each other under the bus and then the next day had moved on and have never mentioned it since. And the same with the creators that went live accusing Athena Strand's stepmom of killing her and then went, oh, I got it wrong, but I'm not going to apologise. Like it's disgusting. And that's... Yeah. That's oh, because it was quite reasonable what I thought, given the circumstances, and, given my and knowledge. And everyone else thought it. That's what annoyed me was hearing a creator going, everyone else thought it. It's like, don't speak on everyone's behalf because I didn't think it. I'm yeah. waiting for some facts to come out. I'm like, okay, yep, yeah, of course, as soon as you hear stepmom, kid, you start going down familiar cases. That's a natural thing. I mean, Chris Watts hooked me in because straight away that porch interview, I'm like, he reminds me of Jared Baden Clay. Like it's normal yeah. for us to do this, you know, to make these connections and get hooked into cases. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think all these people that are following the YouTubers that are um, focusing, what was the terminology that FBI guy, the profiler used? It was um, suspect driven, not evidence driven. So the suspect driven channels that really want to be the first one, they want to be the one that we called it, we picked it. If yeah. they do get it wrong and you're following those channels and then they have the decency to admit they got it wrong and take down the lives and turn off the monetization and change the names where they've named someone, stick around, keep following them. If they don't, that's your cue to unsubscribe. I'm not going to tell people what to do, but that's what I would personally do if I was into that kind of shit, which I'm not. Yeah. If you're watching a channel that speculates and is honing in and it's suspect-driven and they're determined to prove they're right and that person did it and they get it wrong, it's how they handle getting it wrong. That's when you should make a decision whether you follow them or not. If they Absolutely. can't if they can't show some humility and apologise and get rid of all the stuff they've put out there, naming and shaming that person, they're not worth sticking around with because yeah. you'll, know, you'll know straight away what their motives are. I don't mind somebody okay. with going down People the road. Tell you. Yeah, yep. they show you who they are. They do. And, yeah, I look, if a channel does run with something and they're using facts and they go down the wrong way and it, it turns out to be something completely different and they're like, wow, okay, and then they apologise for that and take their stuff down, fine. But if they don't and bang, the next day they're on a new case never to discuss the previous one that they've this innocent person they've been slandering and accusing for weeks on end. I'd be like, um, you're not worth a pinch of shit because I I find humility sexy, not arrogant. So. Yeah, there's not a, not many creators that are like that, though. No. I'm I, I, maybe, <laughs> yeah, I do. I do, I do often query how I even found myself on this platform and if I belong here or not. But um, there's like-minded people out there and it's so delightful when we find each other and you get little comments from someone who hasn't been to your channel before going, oh, this was great, I really needed this, or that the feedback I'm getting still from that little video I made is fantastic. And so mm. that that's why I'm doing it. It's like, yeah, I don't need to be, this isn't about, you know, quantity for me, this is about quality and it's so exciting when you get a new subscriber and you're like, someone else gets where I'm coming from, this is great. Yeah. So I think we... Sure stick around for sure because there are good eggs on YouTube. We've just got to filter through, we've just got to navigate our way through a giant yeah. pile of poo to find them. <laughs> and just not let them not let them win, you know, and not let yeah. them kick you off from doing something that there's you actually do enjoy. Yeah, uh, there's you know. room for all of us for sure. And um, All right. I think it's yeah. definitely time to log off. But thank you so much, Him Animal, for... Um, Popping up, I and mean, you know I love you to bits, girl. <laughs> oh, no, I, I'm not, you. I just wanted to end on a better note, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, me too. And it's a lot of the problem for me is plain text. And, you know, like I said, you, your live chat slower than it is on YouTube in StreamYard and I might see a comment that was 10 minutes before I'm even getting to it. And But, yeah, and also I make mistakes too because, like I have, like I said, I haven't scrutinised those guys that closely because they're not he, – he got – 
ruled out for the moment. So that's where I put him. But yeah. um, and that was, of course, very. Um, I, that's how it should have been. Yeah. I'll definitely I though. I'll, no, I'll definitely get yeah. you up here though when I need you to identify characters in videos and stuff like that. Um, and I don't know the weather's like where you are, but it is miserable here. So I might be waiting a while before I go out and about because it's not looking good at the moment. But I want to thank had, everyone. Um, well, we had Sorry. we had thunder and lightning storm all night and all morning, so it's just finding up again now. So it's yeah, it's a good time to. Well, you go strike while the yeah. iron's hot, make hay while the sun shines. Whatever the saying is. <laughs> I've got a little outro for my channel now too, so I'm going to play that. But thanks for yeah, joining. Yeah, that is awesome, that outro. And um, very... hopefully yeah. see you all again very soon. Bye. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining me. And thank you to everyone in chat and to the mods as well. Um, and, yeah, take care out there. Just be reasonable and responsible, guys. It's not hard, surely. I'll see you all very soon.